contempt of court adjudication in 2020. Um, he went um, in for a year and a day uh, for cruelty animals, caused death, pain, or suffer adjudication in 2017. And the possession of cannabis over, um, which was withheld of adjudication in 2005, and a paraphernalia withhold in 05. That's all, Your Honor. Okay. All right. I have an address for you on Sharon Street. Is that where you live? No. All right. How long have you lived there? I'm off and on for the past three, four years. All right. Do you have a job? No. What kind of work do you do? Um, I'm going to start my own business, but I think I might get out of that. I'm trying to start working with my sister and my hunters. Okay. I missed one count on each. There's also a count on each case of a violation of an administrative code pertaining to waste tire rules and storage. So that would be count three on each of those. I that one earlier. I'm going to figure out all of these. I'm going to keep the bond the same, so it's going to be a total of about $13,000. We'll see you back to court October 5th at 1.30. For both cases. Christopher Shively. Can I have your date of birth? January 15th, All right, you are here today for possession of controlled substance. I found probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? Yes. Okay, I'll go ahead and appoint the Public Defender's Office. And does he have a criminal history? He looks to have an Oregon uh, trespassing adjudication in 2015 and then a Georgia 2012 robbery, but I don't have a disposition on that. But no Florida history, Your Honor. Okay. I have an address here on Jefferson Street in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes. How long have you lived there? Uh, about six months. All right. Do you have a, uh, where'd you live before that? Uh, stayed at my mom. In Hernando or somewhere else? Uh, it's pretty new. Okay. And you have a job, you said? Um, it's possible, yeah. Once I get out of here, just keep working. Okay. What kind of work do you do? I make signs. All right, go ahead and reduce your bond to five hundred dollars. We'll see you back to court on September. That can't be right. That's September fifth. Is it October fifth? Yeah. It's a felony. So is it October? Okay. All right, October fifth at one thirty. Okay. Thank you. All right, Michael Frey. Mr. Frey, can I have your date of birth? 11-4-8. You are here today for a violation of probation. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. the Public Defender's Office. It's based on a violation of probation warrant out of Marion County. So I've appointed the Public Defender's Office. Uh, but we need to, and I'm going to hold you no bond, and we need to figure out if Marion County is going to come get you or if they're going to try to resolve your case here. So someone from the PD's office here will get in touch with the PD's office in Marion County and figure out what we're going to do, okay? All right. All right. Nicholas Vance. Can I have your date of birth? 41091. Okay. You are here today for a DUI. Your fine is $500. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? No. Are you going to hire counsel or are you going to represent yourself? I'll hire lawyers. All right. Any criminal history? No convictions, Your Honor. All right. 
I have an address for you on Middlesex Drive in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes. How long have you lived there? Four years. Okay. Do you have a job? Yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm sorry? Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to ROR you today, and you need to come back to court on September 30th at 9 a.m. Uh, make sure that you, if you're going to hire a lawyer, you've done it by then, okay? All right. Adam Crespo. Can I have your date of birth? All right, you were here today for knowingly drive while your license is suspended or revoked. I found probable cause for your arrest. It's based on a warrant signed by Judge Eineman on September 9th. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? Right. Public Defender's Office. I have the driving record. It indicates about a million eight ninety three suspensions. So. Your Honor, um, he is currently serving a twenty four month DOC sentence that he pled to on September first. In light of that, um, we would like to just resolve this case with adjudication, the one day time served that he has in, okay. um, so that way he can take care of his DOC sentence. He was sentenced when? Uh, it said September 1st. So how did he get this on September 9th? This is from June 26th. It was a warrant. Oh, the warrant was signed on September 9th for something that happened back in June? Yes, Your Honor. I gotcha. So what is the resolution? An adjudication one day time served, Your Honor. Okay, so we can get him to DOC? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Does that sound good to you? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by taking a plea on this case that you're giving up your right to go to trial? Giving up your right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up your right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? With regard to this driving on suspended driver's license, how do you plead complete no contest? No contest. I accept your plea of no contest. I find it's freely and voluntarily entered, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to one day in the Hernandez County Jail, give you credit for the one day that you have in. You'll just have fines and court costs of $450 assessed against you, okay? All right, thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Judge Healis. You're here today for first appearance. The purpose of this hearing is to inform you whether there's a probable cause for your arrest. If I found, I've already reviewed all of the probable cause affidavits in your case. If I found there was no probable cause, then you will be released today. That does not mean that your case is dismissed. It just means the law enforcement officer did not give me what I needed in order to find probable cause today, and you'll be given another court date that you need to come back for. If I found probable cause, I will then ask you some questions to determine whether your bond will be the same, increase, decrease, or whether there are any other conditions of bond that will be imposed on you. Please only answer the questions that I'm asking you here today. They're designed not to get you into any more trouble. They're designed not to violate your right to remain silent and just be limited to only the questions that I'm asking you. You are entitled to have a lawyer represent you at each stage of these proceedings. If you cannot afford to hire one, I will appoint the Public Defender's Office for you today. At this time, I'd like everyone to raise your right hand so I can place you under oath. Solemnly swear or affirm the testimony before the court. Be the truth, hold truth, nothing but the truth. All right, good. Put your hands up as I call your name. Please come forward. Dorothy Gagliardi. Can I confirm your date of birth? 5, Okay. All right. You are here today for a disorderly intoxication and an assault on law enforcement officer. Your bond amounts are right now $1,500. There's probable cause for your arrest on each of those. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Please. I'll appoint the public defender's office. Does she have any criminal history? No convictions, Your Honor. Okay. I have an address here on Merlin Circle in Dade City. Is that where you live? Correct. Okay. How long have you lived there? 16 years. Do you have any type of employment? No, I'm Okay. Okay, I'm going to ROR you for today, but you need to come back to court on September 30th at 9 a.m., okay? Yes. All right. Thank you. Lawrence Gingras? Can I have your date of birth? 11-27-65. You are here today for fleeing to elude a police officer. Your bond amount is $2,000. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? 
Yes, please. Uh, Point the Public Defender's Office. Is there any criminal history? Uh, yes, Your Honor. A Willis adjudication in January of 2020. A Berg adjudication in 2011. Uh, multiple of those, a DUI adjudication in 2009, dealing stolen property adjudication in 08, a ag of bat, uh, cause bodily harm adjudication 08, bird dwelling adjudication 08, grand theft, two counts of that, a marijuana over 20 grams and a dwellers adjudication in 93, and then some older 90s history. I'm going to direct you in Cartwright Road in Brooksville, is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. How long have you lived there? Uh, I've been working as a tree, uh, tree service. Okay. Uh, but it is uh, sketchy right now. I haven't been to work in two weeks. Okay. All right, I'm going to keep your ball the same. We'll see you back before October 5th at 1.30. Joseph Evans. All right, Mr. Evans, you are here today for five burglary and dwelling cases. Uh, I know you have cases already that are pending in front of Judge Merritt, and those are set for October 15th. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're going to set these on that same day. Do you have the public defender in those cases? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, and you want the public defender in these cases as well, right? Yes, okay, I'll make sure that the public defender is appointed on all of your cases. I'm going to keep all the bonds the same, and we're going to see you back to court on October 15th at 9 a.m., okay? Um, and then for the record, the state is asking uh, for um, his bond to be revoked um, as the date of offense on his felony was July 24th. Okay, but he hasn't been able to bond out on that one either, right? Um, I... Um, he has been out. Uh, well, these are these these happened on in August. So. But when was he arrested on the felony? The the felony uh, arrest date was July twenty fourth. Um, it was the offense date, July twenty fourth, Your Honor. Okay, that's it. Okay. The offense date and the arrest date are the same. Yes. Okay. And then these are all. It looks like what are these? These um are from August thirtieth and. Very August 28th, they're all after he was out on that one, August 25th. So August. he did bond out on the felony? Okay. And what's that case number? That's 20 CF 1315. Okay. He also has an open misdemeanor too. 2020 MM 2134. The date of offense of that is July 19th. His offer is 60 days on that. Okay, he has a court date coming up on that, then? That court date's 10 12 at 10 a.m. in front of you, Your Honor. Okay, so we'll keep that there. He's not going anywhere. So, Mr. Evans, if you can still hear me, um, you have that pending felony in front of Judge Merritt, the 2020 CF 1315. Okay. There's a uh, I'm going to recommit you on that case. So your bond is going to be revoked on that case, and you're going to be held in custody until you appear on 1015 in front of Judge Merritt, okay? Okay. All right, Jamie Warrington. Can I have your date of birth? You're here today for a violation of probation. There's probable cause for your arrest. It's based on a warrant signed by Judge Merritt on September 1st. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? No, ma'am. Okay, you're going to represent yourself or hire somebody? I'll represent myself. Any criminal record? Jamie Warrington. Just one moment, Your Honors. Oh, that's okay. We don't need it. All right. We're going to keep you held no bond. We're going to see you back to court on uh, September 29th at 1.15. Alright. Dean Wynn. Can I have your date of birth? 321 Alright. 
you are here today for, it looks like you have some failure to appears. Um, well, it was one case, but it was on a driving a suspended driver's license and a no motor vehicle registration. So I believe that's right. And the bottom there's is $2,000 each, but I think we might be able to resolve those, that case today. Is that, do you have an offer for him? Uh, Your Honor, his offer is um, 60 days. I'm willing to do 30 days today if he wants to. Okay. If you want to resolve your case today, the state is offering 30 days in jail. We'll give you credit for the time that you already have served. Would you like to resolve it today? No. Okay. Do you understand that by taking a plea on this case today, you're giving up your right to go to trial? No. no. Giving up your right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up your right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? No. With regard to uh, this driving on suspended driver's license and no motor vehicle registration in case number 2020 CT 1982, how do you plead? Complete no contest. No contest. I accept your plea of no contest. I find it's really involuntarily entered. Adjudicate you guilty. Sentence you to 30 days in the Hernando County Jail. I'll give you credit for the two days that you have in. You'll have fines and court costs of approximately $550 and the cost of incarceration that you will need to pay. And you can make payment arrangements for those at the clerk of court when you get out, okay? Thank you. Joshua Tharp. All right, Mr. Tharp, can I have your date of birth? You are here today. You have two different cases for um, one count of littering on each case and one count of creating or keeping or maintaining a nuisance uh, on each case. There's probable cause for each. Good morning, everyone. My name is Judge Helix. You are here today for first appearance. The purpose of this hearing is to inform you of the charges against you and determine whether there is probable cause for your arrest. I have already read through the probable cause affidavits in your case. In most cases, I have already determined whether there is probable cause to arrest you. If I determine there is not probable cause to arrest you, then you will be released today. That does not mean that your case is dismissed. It just means the law enforcement officer did not give me what I needed in order to find probable cause, and you will need to come to court another day. If I found probable cause, I'll then ask you some questions to determine whether your bond will be increased, decreased, or whether there will be any other bond conditions assessed against you. Please only answer the questions that I'm asking you here today. They're designed not to get you into any more trouble, and they're designed not to violate your right to remain silent. If you uh, want an attorney to represent you and you cannot afford one, I will appoint the Public Defender's Office for you today. At this time, I'd like everyone to raise your right hand so I can place you under oath. Solemnly swear or affirm testimony before the court be the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. All right, put your hands down as I, as I call your name. Please come forward. William McNamee. Can I have your date of birth? You are here today for a violation of probation. It's based on a warrant signed by, it looks like, Judge Toner on August 25th. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? I'll point the Public Defender's Office. Judge Tohono, once you held no bond until you appear back in front of him on October 5th at 1.30. We'll see you back to court then. Joseph Kowalski. Can you confirm your date of birth for me? All right. It looks like you were just here for an order of recommitment on these cases. 
order of recommitment, but I'm wondering if it's an FTA. No, Your Honor, they're from Drug Court. Oh, they're from Drug Court, okay. So is this the drug court date, September 10th at 1 o'clock? Yes, Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Judge Scaglione has uh, signed all of these things on September 3rd. He wants you held in custody until you appear back in drug court on September 10th at 1 o'clock. Um, do you already have a, a public defender or a lawyer representing you on that case? Uh, yeah. Is it the public defender's office? Okay. Okay. All right. We'll make sure that they know they're still representing you. Okay. See you back to court then. And Mitchell Thompson. All right, Mr. Thompson, can you confirm your date of birth for me? All right. You're also here for an order of recommitment on all four of your cases, um, based on order signed by Judge Scaglione uh, back on September 3rd. And he wants you held no bond until you appear back in front of him on September 10th, which is tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Thank you. All right. Do you have a public defender representing you? No, ma'am. I have Mr. Brown. Okay. Does he already know about this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Richard Covert. All right, Mr. Covert, you have a driving while your license is suspended or revoked, and you also have a failure to appear in front of me for a driving on suspended driver's license uh, back on August 26th. Uh, is there an offer to resolve all this stuff? Uh, yes, Your Honor. It looks like he picked up another Dwellers with this, correct? Uh, yeah. So I would, the state would be offering an adjudication on both 10 days. Uh, Hernando County Jail, fine score, cost, cost prosecution, um, or in the alternative, we'd be seeking an RCO uh, based on this right. new Dwellers. Okay, they'll give you 10 days to resolve both of your cases, both of your driving and suspended driver's licenses. Would you like to take care of that today? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by taking a plea on these cases today that you're giving up your right to go to trial? Yes, giving up your right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up your right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? Yes, ma'am. With regard to this driving on suspended driver's license and 2020 CT 1616, how do you plead a complete no contest? No contest. Accept your plea of no contest, find it's really involuntarily entered, adjudicate you guilty, sent you to 10 days in the Hernando County Jail, give you credit for the two days that you have in. You will have fines and court costs of $450, as well as the cost of incarceration assessed against you in that case. With regard to this new driving on suspended driver's license, how do you plead? Complete no contest. No contest. Accept your plea of no contest. Find it's freely and voluntarily entered. Adjudicate you guilty. Sentence you to the same 10 days concurrent in the Hernando County Jail. I'll give you credit for the same two days that you have in. You will have fines and court costs of $450 in that case. You can go into a payment plan with the clerk of court when you get out, okay? Yes, Ricky Stevenson. Can I confirm your date of birth? Two yeah, You were here today for a trespass. There's probable cause for your arrest. Is there an offer? Uh, yes, there's going to be just adjudication, credit time served. I believe it's two days. Five score cost, cost prosecution. Okay. They'll go ahead and give you an adjudication of guilt and two days in the Hernando County Jail that you already have served. Would you like to take care of that case today? Okay, you would just have to make payment arrangements when you can for your fines and court costs and your cost of incarceration. Do you understand that by entering a plea today that you're giving up your right to go to trial? You're giving up your right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up your right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? Yes, ma'am. All right. With regard to this trespass charge, how do you plead? Complete no contest. No contest. Accept your plea of no contest, but it's freely and voluntarily entered, adjudicate you guilty, sent you to two days in the Hernando County Jail, give you credit for the two days that you have in. You will have fines and court costs of approximately $550 that you need to pay, as well as the cost of incarceration for those two days. And you will make payment arrangements for all of those things in the clerk of court, okay? All right, thank you. Michael Miller.
Dr. Miller, can I have your date of birth? You are here today for a domestic battery. I found probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? I'll appoint the Public Defender's Office. Do we have any criminal history? Uh, yes, Your Honor. It is an adjudication in 2013 for violation of a domestic violence injunction. Adjudications again in 2013 for battery and criminal mischief. That was a different victim. There's a drop child abuse charge in 2013 with the same victim. Uh, adjudication in 2003 for ag assault with a deadly weapon, battery an officer, uh, resisting with, with violence. There's a drop battery in 2000. Um, there is an adjudication for battery in 99. Adjudications in 99 for possession of cannabis over 20 grams and possession of paraphernalia. Um, adjudication for battery in 95. Adjudication for Willis in 95. Another adjudication for battery in 95, adjudication in 92, I'm sorry, adjudications in 92 for battery of an officer resisting an officer with violence, disorderly conduct, and battery, uh, adjudication for DUI first offense in 91, and there's adjudication, or uh, withhold, sorry, in 93 for possession of marijuana less than 20 grams. Okay. Mr. Miller, I have an address here in Almond Court in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, How long have you lived there? Uh, I just recently moved back there. How long have you lived in Hernando County? My whole life. Do you have a job? Yes, I work for the Army Corps of Engineers. Okay. All right, I'm going to order that you have no contact with Jordan Miller. Don't have any contact with him whatsoever. Do not call, do not write, do not email, do not have anyone else call, write, or email him. Do not go within 500 feet of his residence, employment, school, or vehicle. No text messaging, social media, or technological contact with him whatsoever. If you have any contact with Jordan while this case is pending, you could be charged with another crime and held without bond. I need to hold you until 4 o'clock today in case Jordan wants to file any civil paperwork against you so we know where to find you. I'm going to set your bond at $5,000, and we'll see you back to court October 5th at 1.30. No, sir. No, sir. That would be illegal. You can't do ROR on a domestic battery. Have a good day. Robert Curley. Every date of birth. All right. You are here today for a failure to appear in front of Judge Hitzman on a uh, possession of marijuana on September 2nd. Uh, so, can we resolve this case? Uh, yes, sir. The, the offer um, is a withhold paying go. Um, the only reason I guess he didn't take it that the court didn't show up to is that money was the primary issue, but I mean, it's as low as we can go with the offer. Okay. So. so it would just be a withhold, so it's not a conviction. You have fines and court costs of about $550 that you need to make a payment plan for at the clerk of court. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Do you understand that by taking a plea on this case today that you're giving up your right to go to trial? Yeah. Giving up your right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up your right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? Yeah. With regard to this possession of marijuana, how do you plead? Complete no contest. No contest. Accept a plea of no contest. Find it's freely and voluntarily entered. I'll give you a withhold, fines and court costs of $550, and you need to make payment arrangements for that in room 136 of the clerk court, and you're releasable on this charge now, okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you. Alvin Fernandez. Can I confirm your date of birth? You are here today for an aggravated assault and a criminal mischief. There's probable cause for each of those, and it's based on a warrant signed by Judge Merritt on August 31st. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? Yes, ma'am. I'll find the Public Defender's Office. Any criminal history? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, he actually has an open case in Polk County uh, for three charges of ag assault and resisting without violence. There's actually a risk protection order put in place in Polk County in, in October. It's set to end on October 25th this year. And he's now a state offender. Um, he's got quite a few things. It was adjudicated 2000 for uh, possession of a controlled substance, adjudicated 2001 for petty theft, uh, adjudicated 2001 for um, aggravated unlicensed operation of motor vehicle. Um, Adjudicated in 2002 for criminal possession of a weapon. Is adjudicated in 2003 for DUI. Adjudicated in 2005 for, for assault. It was adjudicated in 2007 for criminal mischief. Adjudicated again in 2008 for DUI. Adjudicated in 2008 for obstruction, uh, obstructing governmental administration. 
and in 2008 he was adjudicated for reckless endangerment and act in a manner injuring a child less than 17. Okay. I have an address for you Norbert Street in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. How long have you lived there? Uh, okay. Do you have a job? Yes, ma'am. Kind of work do you um, do? Uh, okay. All right, I need to order that, that you have no contact with Stacy Chain. Don't have any contact with her whatsoever. Do not uh, call, do not write, do not email, do not have anyone else call, write, or email. Do not go within 500 feet of her residence, employment, school, or vehicle. No text messaging, social media, or technological contact with her whatsoever. Do you understand that? Yes, I need to hold you until 4 o'clock today in case she needs to file any civil paperwork against you. I'm going to set your bond at $25,000 on each count, and we'll see you back to court on October 5th at 10 o'clock. Excuse me, ma'am? Yes, sir. $25,000? Yes, sir. You heard me correctly. On each count. Yeah, I'd like to add that I have a warning. I'm going to turn myself in. Okay. I'm going to leave right here at the field last night. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Daniel Kahn. Can I have your date of birth? You were here today for domestic battery. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yeah. I'll point the public defender's office. Any criminal history? Uh, he got PTI in 1997 for trespass, but that is it. Okay. I have an address for you on Blytheville Road in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yeah. How long have you lived there? Do you have a job? Yeah. What kind of work do you do? I have a all right. I need to order that you have no contact with Denica Khan whatsoever. Do not call, do not write, do not email, do not have anyone else call, write, or email. Do not go within 500 feet of a residence, appointment, school, or vehicle. No t email, text messaging, or uh, any other social media or technological contact with her whatsoever. Do you understand that? Yes. If you have any contact with her while this case is pending, then you'll be charged with another crime and held with that bond. All right. I need to hold you until 4 o'clock today in case Denica wants to file any civil paperwork against you. I'm going to go ahead and set your bond at $100, and we'll see you back to court on September 30th at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Did I get everyone at the jail? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good day. Yes, ma'am. All right. Very good. Hi. Right, good morning, everyone. My name is Judge Helis. You're here today for first appearance. The purpose of this hearing is to inform you of the charges against you and determine whether there's probable cause for your arrest. Uh, the, uh, before court today, I reviewed all of the probable cause affidavits in your case. I have already determined whether there's probable cause in your case or not. If I found there was no probable cause, you will be released today. This does not mean that your case is dismissed. It just means the law enforcement officer did not give me what I needed in order to find probable cause today, and you will be given a new court date that you will need to appear for. If I found probable cause, I will then ask you a few questions to determine whether your bond will stay the same, be increased, decreased, or whether there are any other conditions of bond that will be imposed upon you. Please only answer the questions that I'm asking you here today. They're designed not to violate your right to remain silent and formatted not to get you into any more trouble. You are entitled to have a lawyer represent you at each stage of these proceedings. If you cannot afford to hire one, I will appoint the Public Defender's Office for you today. At this time, I'd like everyone to raise your right hand so I can place you under oath. Solemnly swear or affirm the testimony before the court be the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Very good. Put your hands on as I call your name. Please come forward. Karen Gibson. Call me on Do you want me to pass her? Okay. Okay. 
Gibson, can you confirm your date of birth for me? 92884. Okay. You are here today for a domestic battery. Uh, I found probable cause for a a simple battery. The um, they didn't really give me any information about living as a family union or anything like that. It's the affidavit. So there's uh, probable cause for a battery. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Um, okay. All right, I'll appoint the Public Defender's Office and the shape of criminal history. Uh, you know, she had PTI for battery in 2017 that she successfully completed. That was a different victim. Uh, other than that, there's nothing. Okay. I have an address for you on Cloudcroft Ave in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes. How long have you lived there? Um, over 25 years. Okay. Do you have a job? I'm on disability at Kennedy Transplant. And I'm Fairfax. Okay, I need to order that you have no contact uh, with Dominic. No, any contact with him whatsoever, okay? Do not call, do not write, do not email. No contact with him while this case is pending. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to set your bond at $500, and we'll see you back to court September 30th at 9 o'clock. Thank you. All right. Jasmine Ratliff. Can I have your date of birth? Okay, I can hear you, but you're going to need to speak up for everyone else in the courtroom to hear you, okay? You are here today charged with five counts of possession of a legend drug without a prescription. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yes, that's, a, that's an attorney, the public defender. Is that what you want? Okay, I'll find the public defender's office. Does she have criminal history? Uh, Your Honor, she had a withhold this year uh, for trespass on the land of another after warning. Um, we also do have an offer if she wants. Uh, okay. It just being adjudication, 30 days, Mando County Jail, fine score costs, cost prosecution. The reason for that 30 days is there was a Marchman Act done for her. Um, she was released from the involuntary uh, substance abuse services on August 16th and then kicks up the drug stuff. So we're, we think 30 days is appropriate. Um, that's kind of where we're at right now. Okay. All right, Ms. Radcliffe, I don't have an address for you. Do you have an address these days? How long have you lived there? A year. Do you have a job? Okay. The state wants to offer you 30 days in jail. Does that sound like something that you'd like to do? You don't have to. If you want, I can appoint you a public defender, and we can have you come back to court another day. I'm sorry? Okay, well, that's further down the road. At this point, I just want to know, you don't want to take the 30 days, right? Okay, so that's fine. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll reduce your bond to $100 each case, and we'll see you back to court on September 30th at 9 a.m. I've appointed the public defender's office, so you need to contact them, okay? All right. Joseph DeFranco. Can I have your date of birth? 4-18-1997. All right, you are here today for a domestic battery. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office? Uh, I'll get a lawyer. Okay. All right, any criminal history? Yes, Your Honor, there's a withhold in 2018 for trespass on the land of another after warning. Um, and then there's a uh, juvenile thing. So you have PTI for battery and resisting without in 2011. Other than that, that's it. Okay. All right, Mr. DeFranco, I have an address here in Aubrey Ave in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. How long have you lived there? Uh, about a year. Okay. Do you have a job? Yes, ma'am. What kind of work do you do? I'm a welder. I work at the Max Welding and Fabrication. Okay. 
I need to order that you have no contact with Jordan DeFranco. Do have any contact with her whatsoever? Do not call, do not write, do not email. Do not go within 500 feet of her residence, employment, school, or vehicle. No text messaging, social media, or technological contact with Jordan whatsoever. If you have any contact with Jordan while this case is pending, you could be charged with another crime and held without bond. Do you understand that? Yeah, I have a, I have a question. Nope, I, had a, I asked you a question first. Do you understand what I'm uh, saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, now you have a question? Uh, Go ahead. Uh, I have two kids with her. I'm just wondering if there's any way that I'll be able to see my kids with them that time. If or there's... Going on. That's not really... Listen to the answer. That's not up to me today. All I'm saying is that you can't have any contact with her whatsoever. You cannot go near the residence. If there's any way for you to see your kids and organize that through somebody else, like your lawyer who you said you were going to hire, uh, and there's uh, a way that you can do that without going to the residence or having any contact with Jordan whatsoever, then so be it. But yes, you understand my order? Yes, ma'am. Are you going to be able to comply with it? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to hold you until 4 o'clock today in case Jordan wants to file any civil paperwork against you. I'll set your bond at $1,000, and we'll see you back to court September 30th at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Curtis Eddy. Can I have your date of birth? 12 You're here today for a violation of probation. It looks like I put you on DUI probation in August. And you haven't done anything. No DUI school, no community service, no victim impact panel, no 10-day impound, no fines and court costs, and did not report, uh, I put you, I'm sorry, I put you on probation long before that, did not report to probation June, July, or August of this year. So probation is recommending 90 days in jail in order to clear this up. Do you want to take care of that today and be sentenced to the 90 days? Um, no, I can't take an option. Your second option is that I can appoint the Public Defender's Office for you today, and we can uh, set you up for another court date on September 30th. Uh, no, I need a bond or no bond? There'll be no bond, sir. Uh, and I'm open for court date September 30th? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, I'm going to appear in September 30th. Okay. You want the Public Defender? Uh, yes. All right, I'll point the public defender's office. It's no bond. We'll see you back September 30th at 9 a.m., okay? Okay. All right, thanks. Henry Larson. Can I have your date of birth? 227.65. You're here today for possession of methamphetamine and possession of marijuana. Your bond amounts are currently $6,000. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yes, ma'am. I'll appoint the Public Defender's Office. Does he have a criminal history? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, he was withheld in 2017 for attaching a tag not signed and no motor vehicle registration. In 2012, he was adjudicated for DUI, possession of marijuana, less than 20 grams, and possession of paraphernalia. And it looks like he was adjudicated in 1990 for assault. Okay. Sir, I have an address for you on Apache Drive in Florida, Florida. Is that where you live? Yeah. All right. How long have you lived there? Yes, ma'am. How long have you lived there? Ten years. All right. Do you have a job? I don't have a job. Okay. I, I broke my neck. It's four hard right my neck. All right. I'm going to keep your bond the same. We'll see you back to court September 29th at 1.15. Okay. Thank you. Joseph Morgan. Can I have your date of birth? 831-86. You're here today for a criminal mischief. Your bond amount is $2,000. I found probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'll point the Public Defender's Office. Does he have criminal history? Uh, yes, Your Honor. He has a withhold in 2018 for trespass and a withhold in 2009 for, looks like a Dwellis charge. And that's up. All right. I have an address for you on Colbert Road in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. How long have you lived there? Uh, about two and a half months. I just moved up from, uh, from Miami. Okay. Do you have any other family here in the area? Um, the family I'm living with. Is, is that your family? Yeah. Okay. Who's that? Aunts, uncles? It's um, my children, okay. their mother, and, and her mother. Okay. And do you have a job? Yes, ma'am. What kind of work do you do? 
I'm a small engine mechanic in the town and country. Uh, 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 I'll set your bond at $1,000. We'll see you back to court September 29th at one fifteen. okay? Um, okay. Okay. Arthur Nicolotti. Yes, ma'am. Can I have your date of birth? All right, you're here today for a violation of domestic violence injunction. I found probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. I'll point the public defender's office. Any criminal history? Yes, Your Honor. He actually has an open case for grand theft in Sumter County. Looks like he picked that up in January or well, actually December. And then he had an adjudication in 2018 for violation of a domestic violence injunction. It's the same victim. All right. Um, and then adjudication in 2001 for DUI and some stuff in the 90s. And he is an out of state offender as well within a, a burglary adjudication in 1982. All right. So what's going on with your Sumter County case? Um, I believe that's going to play. Um, I, I'm just with my girlfriend. Do you have, do you have a court? No, no, no. Don't talk about the facts of your case. Do you have a court date is what I was looking for. Uh, not as of yet. You don't have a court date at all? Do you have the public defender's office representing you on that case? Yeah, the DGA, uh, uh, a conflict attorney. Okay, very good. Uh, Okay. So I'll make sure. All right, I'm going to set your bond at ten thousand dollars on this case, and we'll see you back to court on September thirtieth at nine a.m. Shane Pollock. Can I have your date of birth? Uh, okay, you're here today for a birthday for dwelling and burglary with conveyance. Yes, ma'am. There's probable cause for your arrest. Yes, ma'am. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yes, I will. I'll find the public yes, defender's ma'am. office. Okay. I see in the PC affidavit it set up some of his uh, prior criminal history, but is there anything else we need to know? Yeah, oh, I didn't check the PC affidavit, Your Honor. Um, Oh, just so, uh, just to make sure it's all covered on the record. Um, yeah, it just he, says that he's a sex offender. Okay, sex yes. Offender. So in 2012, he failed to register as a sexual offender, and he was adjudicated for it, and was adjudicated for petty theft. Um, and then in 2004, he was there was adjudications for driving under the influence, possession of cocaine, use of a vehicle to commit a felony. Uh, there was a null prost uh, burglary of dwelling, including a null prost uh, grand theft in 2005. He was adjudicated in 2004 for petty theft, grand theft, and adjudicated in 2005 for unlawful sexual activity with a minor. Um, so he was adjudicated in 2000 for dealing stolen property, burglary of a dwelling, and petty theft. Uh, ma'am? Sir, yes? Uh, whenever you get in, that case was from 2000, I believe, four. Oh, okay. Um, I was 26. And okay. Was, uh, okay, stop, 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 stop talking, okay, stop talking. Uh, stop. Like okay, oh, no, I'm, that's great. Yeah, I've been through a lot. Right. Okay, I'm sure. All right. <laughs> and, and, yeah, he, has more, he has more adjudications throughout the 90s, uh, okay. and are, yeah, just throughout the 90s. He has drug charges, violent charges, and so on. Um, so. All right, I have an address here on Grant Street. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. I was in the process of moving by then when all this happened. And do you have a job? Yes, I do. What kind of work do you do? I work at DAV Construction. I'm on every equipment out there. Okay. Hi, buddy. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I set your bond at $10,000 on each case. We'll see you back to court September 29th at 115. So $10,000 on each case? Yes, sir. Aristotle Roman. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. Can I have your date of birth? 1776. You're here today for a violation of domestic violence injunction. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Uh, public defender's office is uh, in the case. Uh, 
Mr. Zadiyas? I'll appoint the Public Defender's Office. I see you have an open case right now, 2020 CF 1023. Uh, that is uh, still pending. So there's probable cause to believe that you committed this crime while you were out on bond on that case. So I'm going to RCO you on that. I'm going to revoke your bond on the 2020 CF 1023 and hold you without bond. Thank you. I'm going to set a bond on this case. I'm not done. Sorry. I'm going to set a bond on this case at $50,000 and see you back to court on September 30th at 9 a.m. Yes, sir. Do you have a question? Did you say $50,000? Yes, sir. I did. Um, okay, uh, so my, my question is if the uh, prosecution, at least the prosecution in the court, uh, would they be willing to accept a plea um, deal for this uh, violation? Not today. Uh, Not today. That's right. So my children, uh, their mom. Sir, sir, I'm not going to talk about your children today. Our work today is done. You're dismissed. Thank you, ma'am. Andrew Niederham. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. Can I have your date of birth? You're here today for a domestic battery. I found probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yes, ma'am. I'll appoint the public defender's office and any criminal history. Uh, yes, sir. And he had a withhold in 2017 for battery and criminal mischief. It was a different victim. Um, and out of state, there. I don't know if the case is still open. There was no disposition, but in May 18th of this year, he picked up tampering with witness charges and a domestic uh, violence assault or battery charge. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but given that, um, I think it's relevant to what he's got going on here. Okay. All right. Mr. Edelham, I'm going to have an address for you on High Corner Road in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes. How long have you lived there? Uh, okay. Do you have a job? No. Okay. okay. I need to order that you have no contact with Wendy Leonard. Don't have any contact with her whatsoever. Do not call. Do not write. Do not email. Do not have anyone else call her, write her, or email her. Do not go within 500 feet of her residence, employment, school, or vehicle. No social media or technological contact with her whatsoever. Do you understand all of that? Yes, ma'am. If you have any contact with Ms. Leonard while this case is pending, you could be charged with another crime and held without bond. I need to hold you until 4 o'clock today in case Ms. Butter wants to file any civil paperwork against you. I'm going to set your bond at $2,000. I'm going to see you back to court on September 30th at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Did I get everyone at the jail? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Judge Chilas. You are here today for first appearance. The purpose of this hearing is to inform you of the charges against you and determine whether there is probable cause for your arrest. Before court today, I have already reviewed all of the probable cause affidavits in your case. I have already determined whether there was probable cause to arrest you. If I found there was no probable cause, you will be released today. That does not mean that your case is dismissed. It just means that the law enforcement officer did not give me what I needed in order to find probable cause today, and you will need to come back for another court date. If I found there was probable cause, I am then going to ask you some questions to determine whether your bond will stay the same, increase, decrease, or whether there will be any other bond conditions assessed against you. Please only answer the questions I am asking you here today. They are designed not to violate your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent and formatted not to get you into any more trouble. You are entitled to have a lawyer represent you at each stage of these proceedings. If you cannot afford to hire one, I will appoint the Public Defender's Office for you today. At this time, I'd like everyone to raise your right hand so I can place you under oath. Solemnly swear or affirm the testimony before the court will be the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. All right, put your hands down. As I call your name, please come forward. Wendy Filial. Can I confirm your date of birth, Wendy? 3876. All right, you are here today for an unregistered motor vehicle. Um, I just, Mr. Patel, I hate when this happens. The arresting officer. Um, Held her no bond on this because she had a pending case. Yeah, I, I 
are not supposed to do that. I, it's well aware. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I do have an offer to resolve okay. everything for her. It would literally okay. just be an adjudication, fines, court costs, cost prosecution on both, and it would be all over. Oh, sorry. She didn't show up on the 12th. The judge can't reach out and just ask him but it was a pay and go the offer. Yeah, I get it. I just don't like when the well, law enforcement well, officer makes a judicial determination they, to RCO somebody. They should RCO. Ever. Yeah. Never. And this, this specific one does it all the time. So, okay, Ms. Yeah. Bill Howard, you have two cases right now. The first one uh, is in front of Judge Hitzman. It's scheduled for September 14th. That's for, is it for driving and suspended? No, it's uh, false oh. information. Oh, that's providing false information mm -hmm. to a law enforcement officer. And then you have this case for the unregistered motor vehicle. Uh, the prosecutor is here in court today. He said that he'd resolve both cases today for the time served that you already have in, the two days. Would you like to resolve both of your cases for the time that you already have in jail? And then you can just make payment arrangements for your fines court and court costs. Yes, thank you. Okay. Do you understand that by resolving these cases today that you're giving up right to go to trial? Yes. Giving up right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up your right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? Yes, I do. Okay, with regard to this providing false name to law enforcement, case number 2020-MM1312, how do you plea complete no contest? Sure. Okay, I accept your plea of no contest. Brian, there's somebody at the door. I'll find it's freely and voluntarily entered, adjudicate your guilty, sent you to two days in the Hernandez County Jail, give you credit for the two days that you have in. Uh, you will have fines and court costs of approximately $550. Uh, and the cost of incarceration, and it sounds like you have a public defender on that case, uh, so you'll be given the public defender fee. With regard to this charge of unregistered motor vehicle, how do you plead complete no contest? Yes. I'll accept your plea of no contest, find it's freely and voluntarily entered, adjudicate you guilty, send you to two days in the jail, give you credit for the two days that you have in, you will have fines and court costs of approximately $450. And that will resolve both of your cases, you just need to come down to the clerk of court when you get out, uh, and you can make a payment plan for whatever you owe, okay? Okay, thank you. Paul Hovis. Hi, Mr. Hovis. Can you confirm your date of birth for me? Thank Okay. You have something going on in Pasco County with regard to child support. You're asking for a $500 uh, cash purge for that. Are you going to be able to make that purge? No, I'm going to be a senior. Okay. You're going to be sent in Santa Fernando? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When is, when is your next court date? October 15th. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to change that to an ROR so that this doesn't hold you up from going to DSC. Uh, and you can get over there and start your time, okay? All right. Paul Yates. Mr. Yates, can you confirm your date of birth? All right, you are here today for two counts of battery on a law enforcement officer, two counts of battery on hospital staff, and two counts of resisting an officer with violence. I found probable cause for arrest on all six of these things. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you, sir? Yes. All right, I'll appoint the public defender's office. Does he have a criminal history? He does not, Judge. Okay. All right, I have an address for you on Swallow Lane in Spring Hill. Is that where you live, sir? Yes, ma'am. How long have you lived there? 10 years. All right, do you have a job? No, ma'am. Okay. All right, I'm going to set your bond at $100 on each charge, and we'll see you back to court September 29th at 115, okay? Okay. All right. All right, Mr. Lewis, can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. I just had to unmute. Okay, that's okay. Everyone loves to mute me. All right, so you are here. We have some cases going on in Marion County uh, for James Jacobs. Um, what is going on with that? Do we just need... An arraignment date or what? Jacobs, I'm not familiar with Judge. Oh, that's not the one. Follows. It was on DeAndre Hopkins and Ron oh, Moss. You are right. So what are we doing with those guys? 
Uh, Judge, they have been uh, they have been uh, charged uh, by them. I believe they've been already arrested on the warrants now. Yes. Just need to get them to the first appearance. I need counsel to be appointed. I don't have. I'm, quite honestly, I'm in the parking lot of the Jason Three Doctors office right now, so okay. I don't have the documentation in front of me. But I'm familiar with the charges. Mr. Hopkins does have a history. Mr. Walsh does not. So how do we? Are we? I mean, th are you thinking that this is their first appearance right now? Yes. Okay, well, how am I going to inform them of what they've been charged with and um, advise them? Uh, is, is, is there a copy of the uh, charging document on the sheets? No, I got an email. Okay, Here's what, I'm gonna ask, <laughs> Judge, what I'm going to ask you to do now yeah. is if we can pass this, okay. I'm going to see if I can access this from where I'm at. Uh, on our system. There's things I can get into remotely and things I can't. Um, how, how are we getting their appearance? I thought that there was a way we were getting their appearance from Marion County, no? I, I thought that they were on a uh, jail link from, from uh, Marion. My understanding is that it was going to be set up for today. That it was supposed to be by Zoom? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, right. that was my understanding, too. Uh, but nobody is on the Zoom link except for you and I. Okay. So um, I don't that know. makes that, that makes for a, a very ineffective uh, first appearance, I would suggest. Right. Yeah. Uh, we agree. That's um, here would be my suggestion, Your Honor. Um, let's let's pass it for this second. Let me call the office and see if there's an issue on the way. Okay. If for some reason. Jail did not get that set up, and I'm going to move to go ahead and reset this for next week. Okay. And do it that way because I would agree. They have to be on the video link. They okay. have to be advised of the right. charges. So I'll just keep the Zoom link open. You see what you can do, and then I'll keep the sound on. If you get back to me, I'll hear you, and we'll figure out what's going on, okay? Yes, ma'am. I'll jump okay. in at the appropriate time. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. And, Judge, if you want to let them know that I can help out up in the office if this gets done. Okay, he's already okay. <laughs> okay, so where are we? Um, uh, Joseph Archura. Oh, that's me. Archura. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, there you are. Can you confirm your date of birth for me? February nineteenth, nineteen eighty seven. All righty. It looks like you have a driving on suspended driver's license, a third or subsequent offense, a DUI, a third or subsequent offense, and. There's probable cause because it looks like it's based on a warrant signed by Judge Toner on uh, August 21st. It also looks like you have a private attorney. Uh, the law office of Chip Mander, it looks like it's on your case. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. uh, okay. I'm actually on the docket for this month. On yep. the 15th. No, the 15th. Gotcha. Yep, planning on it. Uh, Ms. Carantino from Chip Mander's office is not on this case, Your Honor. She's on the DUI and picked up the same day. She's uh, got a. Okay. He pick up are you planning? Okay, so are you planning on hiring private counsel, or do you want the public defender's office? I have a private counsel. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see. You live in Jessica Drive in Spring Hill. Yes, ma'am. All right. And how long have you lived there? Thirty-three years. All right. And are you employed? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. I was until yes. Okay, well, that makes sense. All right, is there anything else you wanted to say? Uh, well, besides the fact that he was on, he went on probation, he was on bond for one of the court's cases when this happened. Well, he I picked up a deed. That's the next docket on the 16th. Uh, what it hits me, she and I have already spoken to. We're going to talk about that the next day to see how my felony court went. Right. We're going to be able to put it in this community as felonies. But I'm talking on the 15th, I'm going to be on the 16th. Yes, I gotcha. We'd, they have to be separated. I, I know that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. His history is extensive. There's a lot of traffic stuff. He picked up a DUI about six hours before this one. So he's already charged in case. Right, but it's all the same. There's no, he's not RCO level on that. No, and he he's in, not. Right, okay. But he, after this offense, Your Honor, the reason why he violated his probation is he, about a month after these, uh, these incidents in June, in July, he had um, some kind of incident where law enforcement was called because he overdosed. Okay. Uh, so he's got a serious 
drug problem, but he also has a serious driving problem, and there's no conditions of release that is going to keep the community safe. He was brought to the hospital for drugs and DUI, and then checked himself out somehow, or got out, and then crashed into a, a child and our parent. Mm -hmm. okay, so we, we'd request an increase in bond, if, at least to keep it the same, or increase it. Okay. All righty. It's a sticky situation, Your Honor. Okay, well, I, I'm sure it is, and I'm sure that you have some defenses that you can talk to. You have very capable lawyers who are looking into your case. I just I don't want you to say anything else today uh, that could be getting you into any more trouble because you are in enough of it, okay? So yes, ma'am. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so we're going to set everything for, we said September 15th at, I believe that's at 9 a.m.? Yes. All right. 9 a.m. on the 15th. We're going to set the bond at twenty thousand dollars each. Thank you. And there's no driving as a condition of bond, which of course there's no driving anyway. Any type of driving that you do is going to be illegal, so you should not be behind the wheel of a car right now. Um, yes, and I think that's that's it. I don't have to do anything with Hitzman's court date, right? No, no, no ma'am. All right. I think it's an M2. That's so. it. Yeah, he's, he's Appreciate it. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you too. Alexander, go for it. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Can I confirm your date of birth? All right, you are here today for uh, a domestic battery. I found probable cause for your arrest. And there's also a violation of probation, and there's also a probable cause for your arrest on that. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you on these things? I just need to get a hold of my attorney. Okay, you have a private lawyer? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Okay, I'll put in there that you're going to hire private counsel. All right, I have an address for you on Kindlewood. Oh, that's funny. Kindlewood Trail in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. All right, how long have you lived there? Okay, how long have you lived in Hernando County? Since February. And where did you live before that? California. California, okay. Okay, do you have any other family or anyone else here? Just my fiance. Okay, and your fiance is at the Kindlewood Trail address as well? Yes, yes ma'am. All right, what's the criminal record look like? Uh, yes, sir. he actually just got an adjudication um, in July of this year against this victim um, for battery and possession of marijuana, less than 20 grams. All right, and he's, he also, on, he's on probation. And he is on the probation. Just was put on probation in July, right? So yeah. like he's almost done. Yes, and he was put on probation. No, no, not at all. Okay. Um, and then he actually had a dropped battery earlier this year, March, against the same victim. And okay. that was solely on the request of the victim. So All right. we would request a significantly high bond, if any. All right, I need to order. Alexander, you can't have any contact with Sarah Thompson, okay? You can't call her. You can't write her. You can't email her. Uh, you can't have any third-party contact with her. You can't go. If for some reason you uh, resolve the uh, violation of probation and you get out, um, you can't go within 500 feet of a residence, employment, school, or vehicle, and I need to hold you until 4 o'clock today in case she wants to file any civil paperwork against you. So there's absolutely no contact with Ms. Thompson whatsoever. If you have any contact with her or if anyone else has any contact with her on your behalf, you could be charged with another crime and held without bond. Do you understand that? Yes, okay. And I'll hold you until 4 o'clock, and I'm going to set your bond at $10,000 for that. We'll see you back to court September 29th at 1.15. And then there's no bond on the violation of probation, and we have the same court date on September 29th at 1.15. So make sure you get in touch with Mr. Kendall, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Eugene Bellani. Can I have your date of birth? All right, you are here today for a burglary of a dwelling. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Uh, yes, sir. I'll the public defender's office. This is criminal history is like. Yes, sir. He's got an adjudication in 2005 for possession of cocaine. 
and adjudications in 1999 for communications fraud, uh, four counts of employment of an unlicensed telephone personnel, and conspiracy to commit racketeering and racketeering uh, with old 96 for Willis. Um, he's got some out of state history as well, Judge. Um, but it looks like it's from the 70s and 80s. If you'd like to hear that. Okay. Uh, all right, Mr. Bellani, I have an address for you on Georgetown Drive in Castleberry, Florida. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. All right. How long have you lived there? I've been there for four years now. Okay. But right, you're from New York, right? Yes, ma'am. Ah, I knew it. Okay, do you have a job? Uh, I'm just trying to go to The most recent one was 2005. Is that right? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. All right. I'm gonna set. I'm gonna keep your bond at ten thousand dollars. We're gonna see you back to court September 29th at 1:15. Okay. Okay, Your I'm not going to do that today, but the public defender's office can bring it in front of the judge assigned to your case. Uh, but based on your prior record. I'm not increasing it today. I'll go ahead and keep it the same. And then you can talk to your lawyer about getting a bond lower, okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure. I don't know the status of your vehicle, um, but it's certainly something that your lawyer can look into. Okay. Okay? All right. Raymond LeClaire. Hi, can you confirm your date of birth for me? All right. You are here for a violation of probation. It looks like you're on probation for petty theft. Um, the probation department is recommending 10 days in jail and to terminate your probation unsuccessful. Is that something that you want to take care of today? Uh, probation is recommending 10 days jail in order to resolve your case. Is that something that you want to take care of today, or do you want to talk to a lawyer first? I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, no, there would be no bond. It's a violation of probation, so there would be no bond on that. Um, you'd have to wait in jail until we get you into court in a couple weeks. Yes, sir. Um, All right. I don't know if he has any time in. Does anybody? Uh, oh, a couple okay. days. I know he's got at least two. I, I'm not seeing any on here, Judge. I would have to look at it, Joe. Okay. All right. Do you understand that by admitting that you violated your probation, you're giving up your right to go to trial? Yes. You're giving up your right to have a hearing, and you're giving up your right to confront witnesses at that hearing and call your own witnesses at that hearing. Do you want to give up that right in order to take care of this case today? Yes. With regard to the violation of probation on this petty theft case in 2020 MM 485, do you admit that you violated your probation? Yes. I accept your admission. I find it's freely and voluntarily entered, adjudicate you guilty, revoke and terminate your probation, sentence you to 10 days in the Hernando County Jail. I'll go ahead and give you credit for two days. You will have the cost of prosecution assessed against you, and I don't know whether there was uh, restitution, but if there was there was not, Judge. Sorry, there, there, was, there was not. Okay. All right, so that should clear up this case, okay? All right, there's the cost of incarceration as well. Okay, Justin McFadden. Can I have your date of birth? 92590. All right, you are here today for a burglary and a resisting officer without violence. Your bond amounts are right now $11,000. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yes, ma'am. All right. I will appoint the public defender's office. And any criminal history? Uh, yes, Your Honor. He got PTI in 2012 for two counts of possession of a controlled substance and possession of paraphernalia. There's a withhold in 2010 for Dwillis, a withhold in 2009 for Dwillis. He was adjudicated in 2010 for criminal mischief, a withhold in 2008 for leading the scene of an accident. He is uh, it's a juvenile, um, and he is an out-of-state out offender as well. There's an adjudication in 2011 for false information to law enforcement. Okay. I have an address to you on Tiburon Ave in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? No, ma'am. 
Okay, where do you live? Sixty four O two Indian Rock Court. Where's that? Spring Hill, Florida, three four six oh six. How long have you lived there? Two years. All right. Do you have a job? Yes, ma'am. I have a detailing business I own. Okay. All right, I'm going to set your bonds at 5000 on count one and 500 on count two. I will see you back in court on September 29th at 115. Thank you. All right, thank you. James Jacobs. Mr. Jacobs, can I confirm your date of birth? All right. You are here today for a grand theft uh, and possession of a firearm by a felon and a dealing in stolen property. There is probable cause for all three of those. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'll appoint the Public Defender's Office. Is there any criminal history? Uh, yes, Your Honor. He had a drop battery in 2019, or a domestic battery by strangulation in 2019. He had a withhold in 2019 for petty theft. He was adjudicated in 2006 for possession of controlled substance and possession of marijuana less than 20 grams. He was adjudicated in 99 for novella DL, adjudicated in 97. Um, it's a C docket for filing charges. Um, adjudicated in 97 again for possession of marijuana. Uh, I wasn't provided with his out of state history, so I don't know anything about that. All right. All right, Mr. Jacobs, uh, I have an address for you in Wikiwachi. It just says Wikiwachi. Do you have a street address there, or are you living outside right now? Living outside right now. Okay. And do you have any type of employment? Yes, ma'am. What kind of work do you do, sir? I uh, have Okay. I'm going to set your bond at $1,000 on each count, and we'll see you back to court on both cases on September 29th at 1.15, okay? All right, thank you, sir. Did I, did I get everyone at the jail? Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Have a good day. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, very good. Good afternoon. My name is Judge Healers. You're all here today for first appearance. The purpose of this hearing is to inform you of the charges against you and determine whether there is probable cause for your arrest. Before court today, I've already reviewed all of your probable cause affidavits in your cases, and I've already determined whether there's probable cause. If I found there was no probable cause, you will be released today. That does not mean that your case is dismissed. It just means that the law enforcement officer did not give me what I needed in order to find probable cause, and you will be given another court date. If I found probable cause, I'll then ask you some questions to determine whether your bond will be increased, decreased, stay the same, or whether there are any other bond conditions that will be imposed on you. Please only answer the questions I'm asking you here today. They are designed not to violate your right to remain silent and designed not to get you into any more trouble. If you are entitled to have a lawyer represent you at each stage of these proceedings, if you cannot afford to hire one, I will appoint the Public Defender's Office for you today. At this time, I'd like everyone to raise your right hand so I can place you under oath. So I swear our firm testimony before the court will be the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. All right, put your hands down as I call your name. Please come forward. Janet Batson. Good morning. Can you confirm your date of birth? 10-15-85. Okay, you are here today. Mike, can you open the door? You are here today for a trespass case, and you also have two cases in front of Judge Hitzman, a driving on suspended driver's license, no motor vehicle registration, in one case, in another case, a driving on suspended driver's license and a no motor vehicle registration. Uh, so the state attorney's office has an offer for you today to resolve all of your cases for 30 days in the Hernando County Jail and will give you credit for the time that you have in. Do you want to resolve all of your cases today? Yes. Okay. All right, let's take them one at a time then. The first case I have here for you is uh, case number 2020. 
Do you understand that if you resolve this case today, you're giving up your right to go to trial? Yes. Giving up your right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up your right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? Yes. Yeah. All right. With regard to this driving on suspended driver's license and no motor vehicle registration, how do you plead a complete no contest? No contest. Accept your plea of no contest, find it's freely and voluntarily entered, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 30 days in the Hernando County Jail. Would the state agree to two days on each of these cases? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Give you credit for the two days that you have in. You will have fines and court costs to pay on that case of approximately $640, and you will also have the cost of incarceration assessed against you. With regard to case number 2020, CT 2209, driving on a suspended driver's license and no motor vehicle registration, how do you plead to each of those? You can plead no contest. No contest. Accept your plea of no contest to each of those, but it's really involuntarily entered, adjudicate you guilty, sent you to 30 days in the Hernando County Jail. Uh, give you credit for the two days that you have in. You will have fines and court costs of approximately $640 on that case. With regard to this new charge of trespass, how do you plead? Complete no contest. No contest. Accept your plea of no contest, but it's freely and voluntarily entered, adjudicate you guilty, sent you to 30 days in the Hernando County Jail, give you credit for the two days that you have in. You'll have fines and court costs of approximately $550 on that case. That will clear up all of your cases. Do you have any questions? Good. Okay. Thank you. Mary Jane Bergen. Can I have your date of birth? December 20th, 1990. You are here today for a battery charge. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? Uh, no, I don't want us to plead. Do you want to plead today? Is there an offer for her today? Uh, your Honor, I think it's showing as a felony. But Is it? Okay. So we can't plead today. They need a little bit more time to look into your case, and you need to get in front of the circuit judge. Uh, so with that being said, it's going to take a little bit longer. Do you want me to appoint you a Public Defender? Uh, yes, please. Okay. I'll appoint a public defender to represent you and criminal history. A battery adjudication of guilt in 2018 with a different victim, a trespass adjudication withheld in 2018, and a possession of controlled substance, um, but it was a, uh, it says cannabis, so it, um, it is a misdemeanor, so adjudication withheld in 2019. Okay. All right, Mary Jane, I don't have an address for you. Do you have an address these days? No, ma'am. Do you have any type of employment? No, ma'am. All right, we'll set your bond at $500 and we'll see you back to court on September 29th at 115. Your Honor, are, they, um, are you going to uh, do a no contact order in that? Um, I, yeah, I can do a no contact with the victim, but it's not like she knows who the victim is. Oh, okay. gotcha. That type of situation. Uh, Regina Horn. Can I have your date of birth? 11, 11, 99. You are here today for a possession of paraphernalia and a trespass. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Um, if I can, I'm not going to take care of Regina Horn. States offers adjudication two days time served, Your Honor. What's their record? Um, a Dwillis adjudication of guilt in 18, a Dwillis in 16, a Dwillis um, in 15. That was adjudication withheld, and then a petty theft withhold in 2010. So four prior misdemeanors. And what was the offer? Just time served? Adjudication, two days time served. Okay. All right, Regina, if you want to resolve this case today, they'll go ahead and give you two days. Hernando County Jail will give you credit for the two days that you have in. We will have fines and court costs assessed against you of approximately $640, and you will have the cost of incarceration at $50 a day for the two days that you had in. Do you want to resolve it today? It's possible. Oh, it's possible. Do you want to? Yes? No. Okay. Do you understand that by taking a plea today that you are giving up your right to go to trial? No. Giving up your right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up your right to have the state prove the case against you. 
Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? Yes. With regard to this possession of drug paraphernalia, how do you plead? Complete no contest. No, no, no. And with regard to the trespass after warning, how do you plead? Complete no contest. No contest. I accept your plea of no contest. Find it freely and voluntarily entered. Adjudicate you guilty. Since you did two days in the Hernando County Jail, give you credit for the two days that you have in. You will have fines and court costs of approximately $640 and the cost of incarceration assessed against you. But that releases you today on this charge. You can make payment arrangements for all of those things in the clerk of court. Yes, Joshua Beard. Can I have your date of birth? You are here today for a trespass after warning. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office, or is there an offer on this one as well? Uh, the state's offer is 40 days in the county jail. Okay. They're looking for 40 days in jail for you. Do you want to take that plea today, or would you want me to appoint a public defender? Uh, okay. Do you understand that by taking this plea today, that you're giving up a right to go to trial? Yes, ma'am. Giving up a right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up a right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. With regard to this trespass charge, how do you plead? Complete no contest. No contest. Accept your plea of no contest. Find it's freely and voluntarily entered. Adjudicate you guilty. Sent you to 40 days in the Hernando County Jail. Give you credit for the 40 days that you have in. Well, the fines and court costs assessed against you of approximately $550 and the cost of incarceration uh, for the two days that uh, for the time that you're doing in jail. And that should clear up this case today. Uh, just right. want to clarify, um, uh, he doesn't have 40 days credit, right? Oh, no, not 40 no, days okay. credit. Um, two. Two days. Two days credit for time, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm oh, sorry, no. He's sentenced to 40 days, has two day credit. Sorry. All right, thank you. Wendell Taylor. Yes, ma'am. Can I have your date of birth? Four, okay, you are here today for possession of controlled substance and possession of paraphernalia. Your bond amounts are $3,000. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office? Yes. I'll find the public defender's office. I'm going to ask the state if you have a criminal history. Uh, the defendant does have an open possession of controlled substance in Hernando um, with um, that's currently set for October 30th for a pre-trial in front of Judge Merritt at 9 in the morning. That date of offense was April 15, 2020. The state is asking for an RCO. His history is an, uh, a battery domestic violence adjudication in 03, but no other um, convictions. All right, Mr. Taylor, I have an address here on Harris Hill Road in Dade City. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. How long have you lived there? Uh, a year. Do you have a job? Yes, ma'am. What kind of work do you do? Oh, uh, power work at Bristol Fire. Okay. All right, well, did you hear what the state attorney said? Okay. What they're saying is that you have a pending case right now in front of Judge Merritt for possession of controlled substance, and there's probable cause to believe that you committed another crime while you were out on bond on that case, and that other crime is the same exact thing they already charged with another possession of controlled substance. And based on that, they're asking me to revoke your bond and hold you into the hold you in the Hernando County Jail until you resolve both of your cases. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the bond the same on this case. It's 2000 and 1000 I'm going to grant the state's motion for a recommitment order. I'm going to revoke your bond on the other case. Do you have a case number? Yes, Your Honor. Um, case number is 2020-CF-617. 617. Yes, Your Honor. All right. The bond on that will be revoked. You have a court date coming up. Did you say October 30th? October 30th, yes, Your okay. Honor. I'm going to put it at the sooner date. The one that was set on here was September 29th at 1.15. Is that a Judge Merritt date? Okay. So what we'll do is we'll set both of your cases. The 2020 CF 617, we'll strike that from the 1030 docket and put it on the September 29th docket with uh, the arraignment on this case. And the public defender is appointed, so someone will reach out to you soon, okay? Sure. Uh, yeah, we'll get now. 
You cannot bond out right now. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. He has. Um, you know what? I don't have a copy of that in custody docket. Can you get a copy for me? Thank you. James Crockett. So I have a copy of the custody docket. Here. Morning, John. All right. Can you give me your date of birth? Six one four eight. You are here today for a. Um, it looks like you were supposed to be in court for a possession of medicinal drug without a prescription back on August 17th. And we missed you at that court date, so they put this uh, warrant out for your arrest. So is yeah, there... Yeah, my, my mom has coronavirus. Okay. Okay, stop. Stop. I didn't stop. That. Stop. Is there an offer? Uh, your Honor, he's he spent um, the max 60 days in um, the jail already. He has two open um, misdemeanor cases in Hernando, and then he has an open felony. Um, I just want to make it clear on the record that uh, he has an open 2019 CT3768, which um, Harold Wesley is the defense attorney of record, um, and that's currently set for 11-23-2020. Um, and essentially his offer is time served for the misdemeanors because he's already served the max of 60 days to resolve both of those cases, but he does still have a felony that's out there, which is, um, also has a different defense attorney. Okay. So. But is he, he's not being held on that felony? So no, there's currently... Days today, he can get out. Yeah, there's currently no um, RCO uh, that has been, you know, we haven't done an RCO. We were going to do an RCO at the last court date, but um, he wasn't there. So. Okay. Okay. So did you hear that, Mr. Crockett, or do you need me to go over it again? Uh, I didn't really hear it, but I'm sure it was always getting paid. For the 60 days that you already have in. So you'd be clean to 60 days and get credit for 60 days served. Yes, ma'am. I'll actually do Okay. Uh, do you understand that by this, taking a plea on this case that you're, you are giving up your right to go to trial? Yes, ma'am. Giving up your right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up your right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. With regard to this possession of additional drug without a prescription, how do you plead? Complete no contest. No contest, ma'am. Accept your plea of no contest, find it's freely and voluntarily entered, adjudicate you guilty, sent you to 60 days in the Hernando County Jail give you credit for the 60 days that you have in. You have fines and court costs that you need to pay of approximately $550, and you also have the cost of incarceration assessed against you. That clears up this case. You do have some other cases out there. You need to, and it sounds like you have some representation on those cases. You need to make sure to make all of those court dates, but that clears up this case, okay? All right, thank you, ma'am. Are we also, how did I? Hold on one second. There's also this. All right, you also have the possession of controlled substance, possession of methamphetamine, and possession of a legend drug. Is that correct? All right, so these are all new charges. Is the charges from when they took the recipe? Yes. Stop. 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 Stop talking. I didn't ask you any questions about the facts of your case. And at the beginning, before I started this hearing, I said, please only answer the questions that I'm asking you. Now, you may have made a statement that can be used against you in court later. I asked you not to do that. Okay. All right. I don't have an address for you. Where are you living these days? Uh I'm kind of homeless right now, ma'am. Uh, I was living, uh, I was just living at a house on a big place. Okay. And do you have a job? I was uh, yeah, some time up there in the neighborhood. Okay. And you have, do you want me to appoint the public defender's office on this new case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll appoint the public defender's office. Bonds will stay the same, and you have a court date on September 29th at 1.15. What, can you tell me what the bonds are, please? They're, they're the same. I haven't changed anything, so they're still at $12,000. $12,000? Yeah. Your Honor, did you want to set it for the same date that his oh, felony is? What date did you say that was? Um, his felony is set for October 30th in front oh. of um, uh, Judge Merritt at 9 in the morning. Um, no, I don't want to go out another whole month. Okay. So do you want me to move his other case to September 29th? 
I guess so, Your Honor. Okay, and what's the case number on that? The 2019 CF1942. Okay, both of his cases will be heard on September 29th at 1.15. Gary McClure. <coughs> Mr. McClure, can you confirm your date of birth? All right, you are here today for a possession of methamphetamine and possession of paraphernalia. Your bond amounts are six thousand dollars. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office? Yes. I'll point the public defender's office. Any criminal history? Uh, resisting without violence adjudication in 2007 at Willis Withhold in 99, and um, some drug history in the 90s, Your Honor. But he does have a molest um, child adjudication in 94. Okay. I have an address for you on Greensboro Street in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes. How long have you lived there? Uh, Do you have a job? I'm not this one. Okay. Set your bonds at 2500 and 500 with Seaback Court September 29th at 115. Thank you. Bartlett Morales. Or Morales Bartlett, I guess. Okay, so you're Ronaldo Morales Bartlett, right? Okay, your date of birth? All right, you are here today for driving us, suspended driver's license, habitual. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Uh, sure. Excuse me. Okay. Point the public defender's office. And I'm going to ask the state, other than his driving history, is there anything else? He has an open case in Hernando. Um, it's 2020 CT 1530. Um, it's a driving with license suspended, second or subsequent offense. Um, and that date of offense was on May 19th. The state would ask um, for him to resolve his case with 20 days Hernando County Jail or, um, or, or revoke his bond. Okay. All right. Did you hear that? Not a word of it. Okay. They are saying that you have a pending case right now, driving on a suspended driver's license, 2020 CT 1530. Uh, that's, there's probable cause to believe that you committed another crime while you were out free on that case, and that other crime turns out to be um, another driving on suspended, this time on a habitual. So what they're asking me to do is revoke your bond. Uh, and hold you in custody until you resolve your cases, or they said that you can take a plea of 20 days jail on the misdemeanor to resolve that case today. 20 on the misdemeanor? Yes. You'd still have the felony case that you would need to work out, but the misdemeanor case would be over. I can't bond out anyway, right? Well, w right, because otherwise you're going to be recommitted. Yeah, I'm seeing you no matter what. So, uh, I'm not sure. Okay. When did that court date be? Like 30 days? Uh, the court date would be September 29th on I the felony know. case. I don't know when the misdemeanor. The misdemeanor is currently set for yeah, October right. 13th. Okay. Yeah, I'll take 20 on misdemeanor. If it was a felony, I guess that's what I want to. But 20 on misdemeanor would be okay. Okay. Do you understand that by taking this plea today that you're giving up the right to go to trial? Oh, yeah, giving up right to confront the witnesses against you, call witnesses on your own behalf, and you're giving up right to have the state prove the case against you. Do you want to give up those rights yes. in order to take care of this case today? Yes, ma'am. Okay, with regard to the driving on suspended driver's license in 2020 CT 1530, how do you plead? You can plead no contest. No contest. Accept your plea of no contest, when it's freely and voluntarily entered. Adjudicate you guilty. Sentence you to 20 days in the Hernando County Jail, give you credit for the 20 days that you, I mean, does he have any credit? Right. Probably not. No, two days. No, two, two days, Your Honor. Okay. They're going to give you credit for the two days that you have in. You have fines and court costs of $450 assessed against you and the cost of incarceration uh, for those 20 days. And then with regard to this new driving and suspended driver's license, we'll go ahead and keep the bond the same. And you have a court date on September 29th at 1.15. All right. All right. Thank you. All okay, set. Thank you. Lawrence Puckett. Can I have your date of birth? 
All right. You are here today for no valid driver's license. There's probable cause for your arrest. Is there an offer? An adjudication, two days time served, Your Honor. So resolve the case today for an adjudication and two days, and the two days that you already did in the jail, and you just have to make payment arrangements for fines and court costs of approximately $450. Do you want to take care of it today? I don't want to plead guilty right now. Okay. All right. I have an address here on Jennings Drive in Holiday. Is that where you live? I live here in uh, Brooksville with my daughter, and I have a place in uh, Holiday. Okay. Do you have a job? I have a job, man. What kind of work do you do? Carpenter, okay. All right, any other criminal history? He only has an on state history, Your Honor, from the 80s, 70s. 70s and 80s? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go ahead and ROR you for today, and you have to come back to court September 21st at 10 o'clock. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Not yet. Good morning, folks. My name is Kurt Hitzman, County Court Judge in, here in Hernando County. You folks are here for your first appearance. The purpose of the first appearance is so that you may be informed of the charges against you. I will determine if probable cause exists for those charges. Probable cause simply means it's more likely than not that a crime has occurred and more likely than not that you're the person who committed that crime. Of course, as you stand before me this morning, I presume that you're innocent of these allegations. That presumption of innocence will stay with you through every stage of the proceedings unless and until the state attorney's office is able to prove the charges against you beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. We'll set your conditions of pretrial release this morning, that is your bail, your bond. In most cases, you've had a bond set already pursuant to the bond schedule here in the Fifth Judicial Circuit or the warrant which led to your arrest. I'll determine if that bond should be raised or lowered or left the same or whether there'll be additional conditions of pretrial release placed upon you. We'll let you know when your next court date will be, and if you'd like to have the services of the public defender, I'll gladly appoint the PD to represent you this morning. Do you have a right to have contact with folks on the outside, family, friends, counsel? Finally, and most importantly, you're advised that you do have an absolute right to remain silent with regard to the facts which surround your arrest. I encourage you to do that. These proceedings are recorded. In addition, there is an assistant state attorney in the courtroom with me. If you say something that tends to incriminate you, they will use it against you in the prosecution down the road. I now need each and every one of you there at the jail to please raise your right hands and be sworn. You all solemnly swear or affirm, tell truth, hold truth, none but the truth. Outstanding. When you hear your name called, you can step forward to the podium. Teresa Harvey. Morning, Ms. Harvey, what's your date of birth? 1073. And Teresa, I have two separate issues for you. I have new charges here in Hernando County that are uh, failing, driving an unregistered motor vehicle, providing false information to a law enforcement officer, and driving on a suspended license. And then we have a warrant for you out of Pasco County, which is for a violation of probation. As to the local charges, you want to represent yourself, you're going to hire private counsel. Would you like me to appoint the public defender? A public defender. I'll appoint the PD. Um, state. I know she's going to be no bond on the VOP, but what's her history like here? Uh, so she's got an adjudication in 2019 for possession of controlled substance, adjudication in 2018 for Twillis, uh, it looks like drops, child abuse charges in 2017, adjudication in 2017 for a violation of Fluid and Comprehensive Drug Abuse Prevention Control Act, okay. and, and possession He's just going over your record a little bit for me, Teresa. And possession of paraphernalia. Okay. Um, there's a drops violation of pre-trial pre release conditions in 2015 and an adjudication for battery in 2015. That is, in 2009, there's an adjudication for petty thefts. 2006, the withhold for permitting an unauthorized operator to drive. A withhold 2004 for possession of marijuana. Okay, that's good. Um, that's good. Uh, Teresa, I have an address for you on Tropicana Road in Lacanto. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you lived there? About four months. All right. You have a job these days? No, sir. All right, tell you what I'm going to do. Um, on the local charges, uh, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. 
Those are coming back September 21st. Uh, I'm doing that because the VOP out of Pasco is no bonds, so you can't get out. Uh, and I can't make you any promises about when Pasco might make arrangements to come get you, but it might make them come get you sooner if they know they can come and get you before you don't have to post bond on locals or anything. Um, so they'll let PASCO know that you are uh, able to be picked up. Like I said, I don't know when they might do that. In the meantime, your cases in front of, uh, in front of me will be on the 21st of September. If you get out, you should contact the public defender here and let them know what's going on, all right? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Terry Hinman? Yes. Uh, morning, Ms. Hinman. What's your date of birth? 1014. All right, I've got three charges possession of methamphetamine, possession of marijuana, and driving on a suspended license. There's probable cause for those three charges. As to those charges, you wish to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? The public defender. I'll point to PD State. Yes, sir. And his adjudication is in 2000, in this year for no valid driver's license and no motor vehicle registration. There's an adjudication again this year for grand theft of a motor vehicle. There's adjudications in 2017 for possession of paraphernalia, possession of marijuana less than 20 grams, another uh, possession of controlled substance, and dwellers' first conviction. There's more adjudications in 2017 for possession of controlled substance, possession of cocaine, possession of paraphernalia, and no valid driver's license. And there's one more adjudication in 2017 for introducing or possessing contraband in a detention center. In 2015, there's adjudication for a no valid driver's license. All right. Uh, that's good. Terry, I got an address for you on Punch Road in Ridge Manor. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? About 31 years. All right. Are you currently on probation? No, sir. Okay. You have a job these days? No, sir. I was working with my aunt in her cleaning company. Okay. But I was the owner. No. Oh, I got you. All right. I'm going to leave the uh, bonds for the schedule, which is five grand on the meth, a thousand on the marijuana, and the driving charge. That's a total of seven thousand. I'm going to have you back in court on the 21st of September. If you get out, it's very important that you contact the public defender. If you can't get out, they'll come see you at the jail before you go to court. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Todd Charles. All right, sir, what's your date of birth? Four. Thought I got three charges, burglary of a dwelling, criminal mischief, and petty theft. There's probable cause for those charges. As to those charges, you want to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like a public defender? I'll point the PD, State. Uh, his adjudication in 2020 for or July 15th of this year for uh, battery second or subsequent adjudication in 2018 for dwelling second offense and no motor vehicle registration. Adjudication in 2018 for operating motor vehicle without a license. 2019 he was adjudicated for dwellers, uh, financial responsibility violation, and two FTAs. Uh, there's a withhold 2017 for dwellers. Right. Adjudication 2012 for contempt of court violation of injunction. Adjudication 2011 for violation of injunction. Adjudication in 2011 again for Dwellis and adjudication 2010 for improper exhibition of a firearm. A withhold in 2006 for operating motor vehicle without a license. Um, he does have some stuff in the 90s and he's town state defender as well. So, Mr. Charles, where are you living these days? Do you have an address? 7197 Road. Okay, but that's not where you live anymore, right? That's my address where I live. I got my all there and clothes there. I've been living there for the last, since this last year. Okay. Do you have a job these days? I'm just disabled. I'm going to leave the bonds for the schedule, which is 5000 on the burglary, 2000 on the criminal mischief, 500 on the theft. That's a total of 7500 Additionally, I'll order you not to have any contact with 7197 Hope Hill Road in Brooksville, Florida. 
unless and until that is uh, made okay when your case is resolved. You will be back in court on the 21st of September. If you get out, you should contact the public defender. If you can't get out, they'll come see you at the jail. Thank you. I'm sorry, Judge. Uh, what was the court date? 921. James Fife. Morning, right, sir. What's your date of birth? 8-15-65. James, you're hearing a warrant uh, out of uh, Pasco County. Judge down there who signed the warrant thinks you failed to appear uh, on four charges. I've got a control of a substance without a prescription, keeping a place or structure for drug activity, marijuana possession, and possession of paraphernalia. That judge issued your bonds at 25,013, 25,013, 1,013, and 1,013 for a total of $52,052. If you could post that bond, you can go down to Newport Ritchie and find, you, find out when they want you in court. If you can post that bond, eventually Pasco County will come and pick you up and take you down there so you can take care of this case, all right? Uh, yes, sir. I just uh, want to say the only reason I missed court was because my house burned down. And I that, that, that was it. Well, and, that, and if I could do something about it, I would. I can tell you the state attorney's offices have been contacting each other from the various counties to see if we can move these things, but that's all I can tell you today. Would, would, it, would it be possible uh, uh, to get your permission to, to use my cell phone? I could get the money together. I was supposed to meet with my insurance adjuster today to get the payoff for my house burning down. But I'm not there, and that's a, a substantial amount. And, and I mean, it's over hundred thousand dollars. And uh, I, 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 he can't give the check to anybody. And if he did, they couldn't get it cashed. And I just, I need numbers that are in my phone, and I can't. Uh, right, and, and I, under I understand that, sir. But uh, I'm happy to tell the jail to let you make any calls that you need to make on the phone that's there. But as far right. as the cell phone is concerned, that's a jail policy, whether they want you to have that out of uh, property yes. or not. So that's I can't yes, do sir, anything I, about I that. Just, I just need numbers off the phone. I don't need to, to use the phone, just numbers. I, I understand that, and, that, and that ultimately is up to the folks at the jail. That's not up to me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Tracy Tolliver. Want to start with your date of birth? 8 17, 1985. Mr. Tolliver, the charge is battery being domestic in nature. There's probable right. cause for the charge. As to that charge, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Public defender. I'll point the PD state. Uh, yes, there's, uh, there's nothing in state but out of state. He has an adjudication in 2007 for grand larceny and an adjudication in 2008 for grand larceny. Uh, an adjudication in 2017 for possession of marijuana, less than 15 grams, and that's all I'm seeing. Alright. And Mr. Tolliver, I have an address for you on Richard Drive and Wikiwatchi. Is that where you live? Yes, sir. How long have you lived there? Six months. Alright. And you live there with Tanya? Yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, sir. I'm sorry. That's okay. You have a job these days? Yes, sir. I work for Samson's Construction on uh, Wiki Watching on the show line. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Mr. Tower, I'm going to set your bond at $1,000. Condition of the bond, however, is that while this charge is pending, you'll have no contact uh, with, with um, Tanya Tolliver. No contact means no contact of any kind. You don't call, you don't write, you don't email, you don't text message, you don't contact her through social media. Don't go where she lives, don't go where she works, don't have a third person contact her, don't have any contact of any kind. Any way that you might imagine contacting her, I forbid you to do that. If you have contact and we find out about it, your bond will be revoked and you'll be held without bond until the charges are resolved. That means uh, no contact even if she wants the contact. So if you answer your phone and hear her voice, you should hang up. If you're out and about and see her, you should turn around and run the other way. You need to understand that she cannot drop the charges against you. That's not a decision she gets to make. She may go to the state attorney's office and ask them to drop the charges. She may tell them she doesn't want to pursue this. 
but that decision belongs to the assistant state attorney handling your case. So unless that person or the judge on your case tells you the uh, charges are dropped, you should assume they're not dropped and you should not have contact. In addition, I have to hold you up until 4 o'clock this afternoon so that if she wanted to serve you with a civil injunction for protection against domestic violence, we'd know where to find you. If you get the civil injunction, it's doubly important that you not have contact because in that case, not only could you get your bond revoked here, but you could get uh, new charges for violating the injunction. As far as that address on Richard Drive is concerned, as long as Tanya stays there, you'll have to stay someplace else until we get this case resolved. You can go by one time to collect your things, but you need to uh, contact the sheriff's office before you do that. They'll meet you there with a deputy who will stand by while you collect your things and get going where you're going. I'll have you back in court on September 21st. Very important that you contact the public defender when you get out, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Devonta Washington. Morning, sir. What's your date of birth? 1793. All right. Devonta, I have uh, seven charges today. I've got possession of crack cocaine, possession of hashish, possession of marijuana with intent, three counts of possession of drug paraphernalia, and one count of fleeing. Uh, there's probable cause for all those charges. As to those charges, you're going to represent yourself. You're going to hire a private counsel. Would you like the public defender? Right now, I'm um, public defender. Right now. I'll, I'll appoint the public defender. Steve? Uh, yes, sir. He's got a looks like drop charges to 13 drop drug charges. There's an adjudication in 2012 for felony fleeing or attempting to avoid law enforcement. Um, got PTI in 2011 for no motor vehicle registration. Uh, 2008, got a PTI for no valid driver's license. All right. And Mr. Washington, where are you living these days? 7300 WPA. Say that again for me. 7300 WPA. Okay, how long have you been there? A couple months. All right. You got a job these days? No, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, the possession of cocaine, the possession of hashish, and the possession of marijuana with intent, I'll leave the bonds at 2000 On uh, the first count of possession of paraphernalia, I'll set the bond at 1000 I uh, count the second and third count of possession of paraphernalia, I'll set the bond at ROR. And then on the fleeing, I'll set the bond at 5000 That's 2467, 12000 total. I'll have you back in court on the 21st of September if you get out. Very important that you see the public defender as quick as you can. If you can't get out, they'll come see you, all right? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. That's all I got, Jill. Good morning. My name is Judge Healers. You're here today for first appearance. The purpose of this hearing is to determine whether there is probable cause for your arrest. Before court today, I've already reviewed all of the probable cause affidavits in your case. I have already determined whether there's probable cause or not. If I found there was no probable cause, you will be released today. That does not mean that your case is dismissed. It just means that law enforcement did not give me what I needed in order to find probable cause today, and you will need to come back for another court date. If I found probable cause, I will then ask you some questions to determine whether your bond will stay the same, increase, decrease, or whether you have any other bond conditions that are going to be imposed against you. Please only answer the questions I'm asking you here today. They're designed not to violate your right to remain silent and formatted not to get you into any more trouble. You have the right to have a lawyer represent you at each stage of these proceedings. If you cannot afford to hire one, I will appoint the Public Defender's Office for you today. At this time, I'd like everyone to raise your right hand so I can place you under oath. Raise your right hand. Solemnly swear or affirm the testimony before the court. Be the truth, whole truth, nothing but truth. Yes, All right, put your hands down as I call your name. Please come forward. Sherry Story, Cheryl Story. Yes, ma'am. Can I have a date of birth? 311-1967. All right, you are here today for a domestic battery. I found probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? Yes, please. All right, I'll point the Public Defender's Office. I'm just going to ask the state if you have a criminal history. She has a domestic battery um, adjudication withheld in 2014 and an aggravated aggravated battery person with a deadly weapon uh, that was actually dropped in 2010. All right. Okay. Miss uh, Story, I have an address for you on Tropical Drive in Wikiwachi. Is that where you live? 
That's where I did live. I do not live there now. Alright, I have. I do have a residence at my mother's house. Is that the 9026? Yes, Miss Court. Okay. And where is that? Is that in Spring Hill? It, it's in the Heathers, and I prefer not to give my address okay. out in public. Okay. I'm a girl. So it's in the Heathers. How long have you lived there? 20 years. All right. Do you have a job? No, I'm disabled. I have agoraphobia. I don't leave the house. People okay. go to the grocery store and everything for me. I've been to the doctor once in two years. Okay. So that address with your mom, that's not where William Barkalo lives, right? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. All right, I'm just checking. Here. So I need to make sure that you don't have any contact with him, okay? You can't have any contact with not. him at all. Okay, no, ma'am, I never will again. Okay, so just listen, because I need to I need to order these things. Uh, they make me do this. So you cannot go with 500 feet, uh, within 500 feet of his residence, school, employment, or vehicle. No email, text messaging, or social media, or technological contact with him whatsoever. And you can't have anyone else contact him on your behalf, so no third-party contact. I need to hold you until 4 o'clock today in case he wants to file any civil paperwork against you. And then after that, you can bond out for $1,000, okay? Yes, ma'am. We'll see you back in court September 16th at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Charles Christensen. Can I have your date of birth? 10-15-1985. You are here today for a violation of probation it's based on a warrant signed by Judge Toner on August 18th, so there's probable cause for your arrest. He wants you held no bond until you appear back in front of him on September 21st at 1.30. Would you like the public defender to represent you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll point the public defender's office and we'll see you back court then, okay? Okay. All right, Joseph Clark. Can I have your date of birth? 61477. Okay, you are here today for a violation of probation on two different cases. There's probable cause for your arrest and it's based on warrants signed by Judge Toner on August 25th. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you on both of your violations of probation? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'll point the Public Defender's Office. We'll see you back before on September 21st at 1.30. It'll be no bond until then, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Edward Young. Can I confirm your date of birth? 12788. All right, you are here today for a violation of an injunction for domestic violence. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? Yes, ma'am. I'll appoint the Public Defender's Office. Any criminal history? Yes, Your Honor. An aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and a trespass adjudication in 2011. A burg of a conveyance adjudication in 2011. A battery adjudication in 2010. A burg dwelling and a grand theft adjudication in 2008. A battery assault um, on a school employee and or adjudication in 2007. History. All right. I have an address here on Shane Street in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. But no. I'm not going to be staying there no more because okay. my baby mom keeps pulling up to my house next door. Okay. All right. So, do you know the address that you're going to be staying at? Yes, ma'am. It's okay. in Bush now. Okay. You don't have to give it to me right now. Give it to. You need to put it on your paperwork before you leave the jail. Put it on your right. agreement to appear. There's a space for your address under there. We need to know where to find you if we need you, okay? So, yes, of course, you know not to have any contact with Brittany Brown. I need to order that you have no contact with her. Um, so, anything that says the injunction that you already have, you can't have contact with her. And now there's going to be a not, uh, also a no contact order in this case, indicating that you can't go anywhere near her employment school or vehicle. No social media contact with her at all. Um, all right. We need to hold, well, I'm not going to do it because you already have an injunction. So, I'm going to set your bond at $1,000. We'll see you back to court September 16th at 9 o'clock, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Danny Aranda. We're already bonded with you for first Okay. Mike probably knows. <laughs> Um, 
All right. Frederick Odin. Can I read it a birth? 1986. All right, you are here today for possession of methamphetamine, possession of drug paraphernalia, and resisting an officer without violence. So your bond amounts are approximately twelve thousand dollars. There's probable cause for arrest on all three of those. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Uh, yes, I need a public defender. Okay. And I would also like to see if I can't get my bond reduced. Uh, there's no way I can afford that. I'll find the public defender's I mean, I've office. Never, I've Hold never on, been stop, been stop. stop. Did you listen to my instructions at the beginning of this hearing? Yeah, yes, ma'am. I said only answer the questions that I'm asking you, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so stop talking. I'm going to ask the state here criminal history. Um, a battery by strangulation, a battery second or subsequent criminal mischief adjudication in 2015, a battery second or subsequent adjudication in 2014, a battery and a possession of marijuana adjudication in 2013, a battery adjudication in 2010, a battery and a criminal mischief adjudication in 2007, a resist without violence adjudication in 2005, and then delinquency history. I have an address here on Chamber Court in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am, I do. How long have you lived there? Uh, I actually just moved back in uh, recently. That's my parents' home. Okay, how long have you lived in Hernando uh, County? Uh, 34 years. Okay, do you have a job? I did until COVID-19, ma'am. Okay, so right now you do not I have I have two little girls that I have to take out of daycare. Sorry. Why are you saying that? Uh, you asked me nope. if I had a job. Right. And the reasoning. I just asked if you had a job, so the answer is no, right? You do not have a job right now. What I don't uh, want to no. hear is that with these charges that you have two little girls. That doesn't help you. Because you weren't thinking about them. Uh, Bonds are going to stay the same. We'll see you back to court September 21st at 1.30. Matthew Pence. Can I date of birth? All four, seventy-four. You are here today for a violation of probation. It's based on a warrant signed by Judge Mayer on August 14th. He had your bond listed at $1,144.32 cash only. That must be what you owe on your violation of probation. I'm just guessing. Are you going to be able to bond out for that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. We're going to give you a court date just in case. Uh, your court date is going to be for September 17th at 9 a.m. So if you're unable to bond out, then you'll appear in front of Judge Merritt on that day, okay? But it'll stay the $1,144.32 cash only. Do you want the public defender at this point, or do you want to wait? Uh, if you're just gonna, if you're just gonna pay the cash only bond, you may not need a public defender right now. Right. Okay. So well, no, then. if you need to come to court, you can get one at the next court date. Right. You okay. Do that. Okay. So we just we'll reserve that. We won't appoint one at this time. All right, thank you. All right, did I get anyone at the jail? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Have a good day. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Judge Helis. You are here today for first appearance. The purpose of this hearing is to inform you of the charges against you and determine whether there's probable cause for your arrest. Probable cause only means that it's more likely than not to committed the crime that you've been arrested for. If I found no probable cause, you will be released today. That does not mean that your case is dismissed. It just means that law enforcement did not give me the information that I needed today or to find probable cause, and you will be given another court date that you will need to attend. If I found probable cause, I'm then going to ask you a few questions to determine whether your bond will stay the same, increase, decrease, or whether there will be any other bond conditions imposed against you. Please only answer the questions that I'm asking you here today. They're designed not to get you into any more trouble, formatted not to violate your right to remain silent. You are all entitled to have a lawyer represent you at each stage of these proceedings. If you cannot afford to hire one, I will appoint the Public Defender's Office for you today. At this time, I'd like everyone to raise your right hand so I can place you under oath. Solemnly swear or affirm the testimony before the court will be the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Put your, very good. Put your hands down as I call your name. Please come forward. Sarah Cassiello. Ms. 
Cassiello, can you confirm your date of birth for me? 6-1-64. All right, you are here today for a violation of probation. Uh, it's a misdemeanor violation of probation based on a warrant that I signed August 25th. Uh, it looks like they are looking for 90 days in jail in order to resolve your case. We'll give you credit for any time that you have already served. Does that sound like something you'd like to take care of today, or do you want to speak to a lawyer first? 90 days altogether? Well, this is, I don't know if you have any other cases, but it's just for this misdemeanor. She's uh, judge, okay. and the state's making a wrap offer of 90 days. The other case hold on, hold on. Hold on, ma'am. You have there's a public defender speaking, and I can't hear everyone all at once. Okay, so let me hear what he has to say. She has a new possession of paraphernalia in 20 mm 2362 that's set for an arraignment with Judge Hitzman on September 14th. The state's made a wrap offer of 90 days for both cases, and they would stick to a total of 33 days on both. All right. Do you have any other cases out there, or is that it? Just those two. Just okay. Those two. So it looks like you're, um, the public defender was just telling me that you have another case out there. It's a possession of paraphernalia charge. They will go ahead and give you the 90 days, which will be a global offer for both of your cases and take care of both cases and also give you credit for the 33 days that you have in. Does that some, sound like something you're interested in taking care of today or do you need some yeah. time? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, let's handle this violation of probation first. Do you understand that by admitting that you violated your probation that you're giving up your right to have a hearing? Yeah. Okay, you're giving up your right to confront witnesses at that hearing, call your own witnesses at the hearing, and you're giving up your right uh, to have the state prove that you violated your probation. Do you want to give up those rights in order to take care of this case today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. With regard to this violation of probation on this battery case, do you admit that you violated? Yeah. I'll accept your admission. I find it's freely and voluntarily entered. I'll revoke and terminate probation, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 90 days in the Hernando County Jail. I'll give you credit for the 30 day, 33 days that you have in. You will have the cost of prosecution assessed against you as well as the cost of incarceration uh, for the time that you spend in jail. With regard to this possession of paraphernalia charge in 2020 MM2362, is that the right case in that's right, 2362. With regard to that charge, how do you plead, ma'am? You can plead no contest. No contest. I'll accept your plea of no contest. I find it's freely and voluntarily entered. Adjudicate you guilty. Sentence you to 90 days in the Hernando County Jail. Give you credit for the 33 days that you have in. You will have uh, fines and court costs assessed against you in that case of $550. Was the public defender appointed in that case? We were temporarily. Okay, so I'll go ahead and uh, grant the public defender fee as well, and that should clear up both of your cases. Is that 90 days each one? Yes, ma'am, with 33 on each uh, one. Concur. So it's 180 days? No, okay. it's, they're being served together. Same time. Oh, they serve together 90 days? Yep. Okay. Okay, thank and you. And we could have the clerk strike the 914 hits my arraignment. Yep. Larissa Coughlin. Can I confirm your date of birth? You are here today for a battery charge. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yeah. Okay, I'll point the public defender's office and I'm just going to ask the state if you have any criminal history. Um, a 2017 violate order protection assault um, harassing communication in 2017 with a withhold. Um, all of this is on Illinois um, and a disorderly conduct in 1993. Um, I also have a PC here for a violation of probation on Illinois okay, yep. too. All right. Ms. Ms. Coughlin, I have a address for you on Corey Loop in Spring Hill. Is that where you live? Okay, how long have you lived there? 12 years. Alright, does the clerk have it? Um Anything on the box? 
that Interstate Compact. We send those to um, students. Okay, so it's not a local box. No. It's oh, okay. Can you give that to me? All right, I need to order that you have no contact with the victim in this case, and as much as you know who the victim is, I'm not really sure, but no contact with the victim. I'm uh, going to uh, set your bond at $500, and we're going to see you back to court on September 15th at 9 o'clock. Austin Gonzalez? Is Austin coming forward? Austin. Austin going summons. I don't. Can I have your date of birth? Uh, 9 11 95. All right, you are here today for a violation of probation. There's probable cause for your arrest. It's based on a warrant signed by Judge Mayor on August 18th. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yes, ma'am. Like the public defender's office. And. Looks like we're going to put you on September 17th, back in front of Judge Merritt, and hold you no bond until then, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Thomas okay. Millen? Can I have your date of birth? Uh, March 8th. <coughs> March 8th, 1996. You are here today for a grand theft, dealing in stolen property, and false statements to law enforcement. Your total bond amount right now is $4,500. There is probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yes, ma'am. I'll point the public defender's office. Does he have any criminal history? No, Your Honor. I have an address for you on Punch Road in Dade City. Is that where you live? Uh, yes, Your Honor. How long have you lived there? Uh, about 14 years. Okay. Do you have a job? Uh, not at the moment. We're going to set your bond on count number one at 500, count number two at 500, count number three at 250. We'll see you back towards September 21st at 1.30. Uh, yes, Thank you're on. you. Michael Noga. Yes, ma'am. Can I have your date of birth? You are here today for a burglary of a dwelling. It looks like it's out of Pasco County. Uh, they have a bond for you on this at $150,000. They don't reach out to Pasco yet? No, Your Honor. Okay. So I'm not sure when they're going to be able to get you over to Pasco County, but we're going to keep the bond the same at $150,000. Someone is going to reach out to Pasco and ask if, uh, there's, if there's any way we can get you over there. And if not, uh, if we can reduce the bond or if we can accept some type of plea over here. I'm not really sure what that looks like yet. So no, I, I have no idea. Okay. Should I set a status check or? Uh, yes, okay. Your Honor. I'll, I'll uh, call um, uh, Pasco and see um, if I can get anything. Okay. We'll set a status, status check for first appearance a week from today, and we'll see where we are. A week from today. All right. Thank you. you Corey Achuf. 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 Can I have your date of birth? 1093. You are here today for dealing in stolen property and defrauding a pawnbroker. Your bond amounts are currently $4,000. It's based on a warrant signed by Judge Hitzman on September 22, 2017. So there's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the Public Defender's Office to represent you? Yes, please. I'll find the Public Defender's Office. I'm going to ask if you have a criminal history. Hi. He only has on a state history, Your Honor. He has a Ohio um, failed to appear in 2016, a paraphernalia adjudication um, in May of 2019 out of Ohio, and some um, juvenile history on okay. the state. All right, I have an address for you on Broad Street in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Yes. How long have you lived there? A few weeks. Okay. Where did you live before that? Um, I was living uh, in Lacanto with my mother. Okay. Does your mom still live in Lakanta? Yes, she does. All right. Do you have a job? Yes, I do. What kind of work do you do? I'm a mason for Canaan Construction. Okay. Okay. I'm going to set your bond at $500 each. We'll see you back to court September 21st at 1.30. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Did I get everybody? Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, everyone. My name is Judge Gillis. You're here today for first appearance. The purpose of this hearing is to inform you of the charges against you and determine whether there is probable cause for your arrest. Before court today, I reviewed the probable cause affidavits in your case, and I have already decided whether there was probable cause. If I found no probable cause, you will be released today. That does not mean that your case is dismissed. It just means that the deputy did not give me what I needed to find probable cause today, and you will be given a new court date. If I have found probable cause, I'll then ask you some questions to determine whether your bond will stay the same, be increased, decreased, or whether there will be any other bond conditions imposed against you. Please only answer the questions that I'm asking you here today. They're designed not to get you into any more trouble and designed not to violate your right to remain silent. You are all entitled to have an attorney represent you at each stage of these proceedings. If you cannot afford to hire one, I will appoint the Public Defender's Office for you today. At this time, I'd like everyone to raise your right hand so I can place you under oath. Solemnly swear or affirm the testimony before the court be the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. All right. Put your hands down. As I call your name, please come forward. William John Mackey. Hi, Mr. Mackey. Uh, you are here for a child support enforcement issue. It's my understanding, though, that you've been incarcerated in the Department of Corrections uh, since August of 2019. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And your EOS is September September 1st? 1st, yes, ma'am. All right. All right. So I'm going to find no probable cause for this. You're going to be um, ROR'd, or at least without having to pay anything, because clearly you have not been able to be employed and pay your child support at this time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Miller. Good morning. Hi, Mr. Miller. Can I confirm your date of birth? 6 Okay. You are also here for contempt of child support out of St. Lucie County. Uh, so they have a $1,000 purge on that. Are you able to pay that? No, ma'am. Uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. So I'm not able to change that. Uh, purge amount usually. Have you has it? You've just not been able to work. No, ma'am. I, I mean, I was working, and my girlfriend was paying it when I uh, gave her my paycheck. She was paying it, but she left me, and apparently she would stop paying me somewhere along the lines. And now I'm not working at all, ma'am. So. Okay. All right. Um, is there any money that you can come up with that that would allow you to get out of jail? I, I probably. Maybe 50, 60 bucks to my name right now, ma'am. Okay. I mean, we can we can try to do that. I can set it at $50, and that way uh, you don't have to wait for St. Lucie County to come get you, which could take a while. Excuse me, ma'am? We can set it at $50, set your purge amount at $50, so that way you don't have to wait for St. Lucie to come and get you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. All right. We'll set it at $50. So I can, so I can bond out for $50? Yes, sir. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, Bruce Wilson. Can I confirm your date of birth? Okay, you are here today for a violation of probation. It looks like um, out of Pasco County for a felony conspiracy to commit insurance fraud, conspiracy to deal in stolen property, operating a chop shop. Um, so they have your violation of probation for those charges. So I'm going to keep that at no bond for right now. We're going to get the state attorney's office here to see if they can reach out to Pasco County to see what they want us to do in your case. If they want us to set a bond or if they want us to work on a fee for you, we can. We can See if we can arrange both of those things. But for right now, it's going to be no bond, okay? All right. All right. Thank Thanks. Judge, when is uh, his uh, status check? Sorry. I didn't give him one. Oh, okay. I'm just leaving that up to you guys. That sounds good. All right. Jamie Verzivka. Can I have your date of birth? All right. You are here today for a violation of probation out of Citrus County. It looks like it's for felony burglary. 
how a structure. They want you to help no bond until you get over to Citrus County. We're going to hold you no bond right now. And Judge, either, I'm yeah, sorry, but we, 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 we actually okay. got to speak with the ASA that's okay. on that case there. Um, the okay. offer, if uh, you'd like to take it, is 1129. Um, that's, That's not an offer. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a felony to be okay. okay. Yeah, I guess it was came in as 13 months, so that was for exposure, so. Okay. The offer right now from Citrus County, if you want to resolve the case today, is 11 months, 29 days uh, in the Hernando County Jail. I'm not sure I even have jurisdiction to take plea on that. It's a felony burglary, but we can get you in front of a circuit judge to take that plea if you'd like. Uh, or we appoint you a public defender, and they can start working on your case. And we, but we have to hold you no bond right now. What would you like I'm to do? I'm not taking that. I have a private attorney, and I wasn't okay. able to contact him when I got arrested yesterday. Okay. All right, who do you and have? Judge, may I say something, please? But well, who's your attorney? Charles Barn. Okay. He's at a citrus. And may I, can I address you, please? Sure. I got out of jail in a citrus on August 6th. I got home and was evicted on August 12th. I did not have a phone. I did not have any money, and I lived in Ridge Manor when I got a, my car wires were cut. I had no driver's license. I had no way to report in three days to the probation officer. Okay. I, my mom contacted me. I called my attorney. He told me I didn't have to do anything until yesterday. When I contacted him and he told me I needed to contact my, my probation officer, I did. My probation officer told me to come in there and he would help me. And I did that. I did everything I was supposed to do, and I was hindered from being able to contact him within three days because I, I was evicted. He had no money or no phone. Okay. Somebody broke in my house, and that I had a bunch of dogs in there. The house was a mess when I got there. I had a big dog. Okay, listen. I, so I, I, I feel for you. I do, but I can't. There's nothing I can do to help you. I wish there was. I don't have jurisdiction over your case. So there's nothing that I can do. But you have a private lawyer, and if you haven't been able to call him yet, then I'll make sure the jail knows that you get that phone call. You need to be able to reach out to your lawyer, okay? Or reach out to someone who can get in touch with your lawyer if for some reason that you can't. And uh, Mr. Vaughn should be able to help you out. But there's nothing else that I can do for you today. I have no way to reach out to everybody. Turn it back, Toby. Okay. Um, well, we have... We have a public defender in the courtroom today. Maybe as a friend of the court, he can reach out to Mr. Vaughn and let Mr. Vaughn know that you were in custody. Okay? Uh, I'll be happy to. All right. So I want to reach out to him and let him know you're in custody, okay? All right. Thank you. Laura Harris? May I have your date of birth? Okay, you are here today for a trespass uh, uh, on two cases, so it's two separate trespass cases. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you on these? Um, I don't understand why there's two cases. Okay. Um, does she have a prior record? Is there an offer today? Um, there is a prior record, and it looks like this is actually um, private property owners, so there might be a victim involved, so yeah. I have to talk to them. Okay. Um, but I do have a record if you'd like me to go through it real quick. Um, um, I don't understand how I'm okay. If you hold on a second, you might have all of your questions Absolutely. answered. You just need to be quiet. Okay? All right. Go ahead. It's a adjudication 2019 for possession of paraphernalia, adjudication 2018 for battery, adjudication in 2017 for Dwellis, adjudications in 2016, it looks like four counts of selling a hallucinogen. I unlawful use of two-way communication device and two counts of that as well. And that is adjudication 2013 for possession of paraphernalia. Uh, two more adjudications in 2013 for petty theft and possession of a controlled substance. Adjudication 2013 for Dwellis. Uh, adjudication 2010 for retail theft. And there was a dropped burglary in 2007. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Harris, I don't have an address for you. Do you have an address? Are you, are you living in I'm living at I'm living at 8303 Indian Trail. I don't understand how I'm trespassing. 8303? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Well, you were trespassed from 8030 Indian Trail Road. Uh, the deputy claims to have seen you there on more than one occasion. That's why there's more than one charge. So there's probable cause for today. Do you want the public to 
Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? I don't understand how I'm trespassing. Okay, there. listen. You gave me a different address than what they're saying you're no, trespassing. No, 8030. Listen, listen, I'm not going to get in an argument with you today. This no, no, that's not a different address. 8030 Indian Trail is not a different address. Do you want the public defender? What address do you have for me, ma'am? Uh, she'll be self-represented. Uh, excuse me, what address do you have written for me? Your 8030 Indian Trail Road is where I'll I... see you back September 16th at 9 o'clock. She's back court the 14th. I'm going to see you back. I'm going to set your bond at $2,000 each. So now I'm going to get FTA too? David Porter. That was the 16th charge. That was September 16th at 9 o'clock. On both cases, bond at 2000 each. Mr. Porter, can I confirm your date of birth? 9-22-81. You are here today for a burglary charge. Your bond amount right now is $5,000. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office, sir? Um, yes, I'm just going to send it I'll appoint the public defender for you. I'm just going to ask the state if you have a criminal history. May, may I ask you something? Well, hold on one second. Let um, him do his job first. Go ahead. Yeah, there's uh, an adjudication for possession of paraphernalia um, in July of this year. Uh, adjudication for Dwillis in June of this year, and adjudication in 2017 for possession of heroin and possession of paraphernalia, another adjudication in 2017 for petty theft, adjudication in 2016 for trespass, and adjudication in 2008 for battery, there's a withhold in 2004 for failing to return a DLA registration when canceled, a withhold in 2004 for a leaving scene of an accident with injuries, a withhold in 2000 for possession of marijuana, less than 20 grams, and Withhold 2000 for reckless driving, first offense. Okay. All right, Mr. Corder, I have an address for you on Fairway Drive in Ridge Manor. Is that where you live? Yes, ma'am. How long have you lived there? 25 years. Okay. Do you have a job? Um, yeah, I'm self employed. Okay. What kind of work do you do, sir? Construction. Okay. And you had a question for me? Uh, yes, ma'am. As, as far as I know, uh, the, the officers didn't have anything, any evidence tying me to the scene of the crime besides okay. me buying a uh, stolen uh, uh, stuff. Okay, listen, let me just say, stop. <laughs> you guys Sorry. always want to say too much. I don't, that's why at the beginning I said, please only answer the questions that I'm asking you. I don't want you to make a statement that's going to incriminate you. I don't want you to get into any more trouble uh, based on us having this hearing today. So please don't say anything about the facts of your case. We're going to let the attorneys do that going forward, okay? Yes, ma'am. Is there uh, any way I can get a bond hearing? This is your, this is, we're here right now. I haven't even told you what your bond amount is. So how do you okay, know you need a hearing? Okay. Y'all need to chill. Okay. All right, I'm going to set your bond at $2,000 and see you back court September 21st at 1.30 in the afternoon, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Devin, you're big tight. Can I confirm your date of birth? All right, you are here today for possession of unauthorized Florida driver's license and providing false names to law enforcement. Your bond amounts right now are $2,500. There's probable cause for your arrest. Do you want the public defender's office to represent you? Yes, please. I'll appoint the public defender's office. Uh, and just so you know, it looks like you might have a hold out of Colorado as well for something else. But any other criminal history? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, no. well, I'm not seeing a lot of dispositions. There's nothing in state. There's a driving under the influence charge in 2011 with no dispo. There's an FTA in 2011, another theft charge in 2011. In 2011, there is an adjudication for theft. In 2013, I'm seeing an FTA and not seeing anything else. Though. All right. Okay, I have an address for you on Windmere Road in Brooksville. Is that where you live? Um, that's temporary. My actual address is uh, 5052 Mockingbird Drive, Dade City, Florida, or Rick Man. All right, how long have you lived there? Three years. All right, do you have a job? Yes. What kind of work do you do? Um, management of Ace of the Lions is my employer. Okay. 
All right, count one, your bond's going to be a thousand. Count two, it's going to be two hundred and fifty dollars. And we'll see you back to court on September twenty-first at one thirty. Okay. All right. Did I get everybody? All right. Thank you.